They had me smoking weed like I'm a Rasta A lion falling to his death like Mufasa But then I got up, my spirit got roused up And now I use these scriptures like a hundred round chopper Now I use these scripts and I ain't talking about no pharmacy Addicted to the law, ate the whole roll, not talking sushi Yeah, I spit it raw, exposing flaws and ideologies Christians want no smoke, I cut them up with no apologies Fuck a Mac 11, this 1611 will give you a hundred rounds Everybody gather round, as I put your favorite pastor six feet underground This a funeral, I'm the undertaker in the mortician Rehearse them righteous acts, pray I make it past them auditions Used to be up in them churches catching hella Z's Now I'm on them corners pushing P, I'm talking pop Alright, first and foremost, I want to give all praise, all glory, and all honor unto the Most High God, whose name is Yahweh. I do so in the name of His only begotten Son, Yahweh Shai, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. This is your brother Ariella Sakari Philly, and uh, it's a dialogue between myself and a rabbinic Jew. Um, we're going to dive into scripture um, to see how his people fit prophecy and see how our people fit prophecy. That's the main point of this dialogue. All right, this is the individual um, from the video that was posted uh, about a week ago by the time you watch this, um, titled, uh, let me get it real quick. It's titled, Orthodox Jew Runs from Ariel Sakari. So um, this is the individual who was on uh he apparently came back to uh, the studio while I was in the midst of uh, going into scripture. And, of course, I wasn't able to see the studio. Um, so he's uh, he's back and we're going to have this dialogue um, regarding uh, regarding prophecy. That is the most important thing, uh, of course, outside of the commandments of, of the Most High God, prophecy. Because prophecy are, thing, are words that are recorded before they happen right something is declared from the beginning so understanding prophecy is very important in um in biblical or toraic uh scholarship so hopefully this is a good and uh peaceful dialogue um but let's get right into it i'm gonna bring the gentleman up what's going on yehuda how are you doing this morning Great. Yeah. I'd like to apologize for the brevity of our first interaction. As I mentioned during our first email interaction, I'm much more available in the mornings than I am in the evenings. So thank you for taking the time to accommodate my schedule today so that we can have this Tanakh focused discussion that we agreed upon. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, today is uh, this, the observation of so-called Christmas. Um, obviously, I don't celebrate Christmas, but, you know, I had the day off. Right. I'm not complaining I'm about that in common. I'm looking for common ground. Yeah. So, <laughs> yep. So, uh, so last time, um, so you are you, so you said you're a rabbinic Jew? Yes. Did you convert to rabbinic Judaism or were you, or both your parents? Both Jew? of my parents are Jews. Okay. Where are, your parents, where are your family from? Are they from Eastern Europe, Western Europe? Whereabouts? I mean, like I said, when it comes to this discussion, from what I understand, I listened to your video, right? Mm -hmm. Your position, from what I, I want to make sure I understand your position before I get into personal details about myself, because we're here to discuss the Tanakh, right? This is the primary, yeah. right? So your position, and I think you mentioned this, that the true Israelites are the Puerto Ricans, the Native Americans, and the so-called Blacks or Right. That that is your position. Right. I just want to make sure I'm representing you correctly. So you, you part of it. Right. So my position is that so-called black, so-called Hispanic so, and so-called Native Americans pursuant to their patrilineage mm -hmm. right, here in the Western Hemisphere are the Israelites. Right. That does not that does not exclude other peoples that are not here in the Western Hemisphere. I'll give mm -hmm. you some examples. Right. The the city people, the Hapsh, also known as the Hapshai, they live in. Uh, Pakistan and India, right? Mm -hmm. they, 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 I understand them to be Israelites. You have the uh, Igbo in West Africa. You have the Yoruba, the Ewe, the Bakongo. You have various different uh, Hebraic tribes scattered throughout Africa. You got different people scattered throughout Asia, 
uh, scattered throughout uh, the world, right? Because when we look at prophecy, the Israelites will be scattered from their land due to their uh, not keeping of Torah, right? So mm -hmm. other groups would be, um, you got the Afro-Iraqi -Ir people, you have the Afro-Iranians, you have the, the, the Alak Dam people of Yemen, right? Just to name a few various different peoples uh, that are all over the world that are scattered to the four corners of the earth that I would understand to be um, descendants of the 12 tribes of Israel. Right, yeah. So you would not consider Sephardic Jews, Mizrahi Jews, Kavkasi Jews, any Jews, right? Because you, I listened to your interaction with Harry and Yosef, and your claim is that none of these Jews who have supposedly kept their identity, or, or Ashkenazi, whoever, who have kept their identity, supposedly, right? Because you don't believe that they have, you believe that they have stolen another's identity, right? That is your position? Uh, well, ne not necessarily stolen, right? Mm -hmm. Stolen is a term that's, that's used, right? However, um, I understand through history, um, and we can read this history in in the in the Bible, right? Mm -hmm. Of how different people groups were Judaized, right? We can mm -hmm. see this in the book of Esther, right? We see that the, the fear of the Jews fell upon the people and um, yes. many became Jews. That's how it's rendered in English, but in, in Hebrew, the, word, the root word is yahad, right? Which means to be Judaized. Same way Jews were Hellenized, right? Um, that's what happened while we were in the Persian captivity um, in those various different cities. Um, right, which I'd love to focus on in a second, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then we will continue, of course, uh, after the Persians, uh, well, under the Persians, we'll, we, not all of us, but some of us will return to the land of, of, of Judah. Right to rebuild the city, to rebuild the temple and so forth. Right. Um, and then we get to the part where now the Greeks are on the scene, right? right. Alexander the Great makes his you know, military conquest throughout the world, getting as far as India, right? Hellenizing right. people. And of course, in that, that uh, onslaught, many of us got Hellenized. And then we see the rise of the Maccabees, right? Judas right, Maccabeus, right? right? Absolutely. Um, and which gives rise to the what? The Hasmonean dynasty. Right. Um, and under the Hasmonean dynasty, they subjugated the Edomites, right, that were down in the land of, of Edom um, and converted them to their uh, to our ways. And then, of course, now you get the rise of the Herodian dynasty. So by the time um, of who the world calls Christ is on the scene, you have King Herod, right, Herod the Great, who's the son of Antipater the Edomite, right, who's a client uh, king. Um, and set up as a governor by the Romans, who we, right. I would also consider Edomite. So there's a there's there's a long history of of white presenting or Caucasian presenting individuals uh, who have taken on the the customs of the Jews of the Israelites, and that's what I believe that your people descend from. Okay, fine. So you mentioned the Book of Esther, right? Mm -hmm. So Obviously, this is kind of the, you know, this is a scripture focused discussion. So I, and I listened to your video and I really think that we have more in common than you might realize because you made a lot of good points. And I just want to highlight some of the things that you might not realize that we agree upon. It, it, would, would that be OK if I. Sure. I, listen, I, I have no issues with, uh, you know, going into scriptures and seeing what we agree or disagree upon um, that I don't have no issue with that. Yeah. So, yeah. So let's. Which, which one would you like to go to? So, yeah, um, so the scripture that we were speaking about before regarded that, that you were focusing on regarding, well, actually, just really in a, in a, from a more generic perspective, right? I agree that the scripture where it talked about the Jews taking on, taking Purim, that would be Esther chapter 9, right, verses 27 through 32. We, I guess we can focus on that one since that was the what we were what you discussed in the video so i agree with you that this was a biblical feast festival that we took on that god did not command the jews to do that. we're in agreement on that yeah give me actually give me one second because i'm getting ready to, i'm trying to share the screen so yeah. you can pull the scriptures up um i'm on a new computer right now and i have to relaunch my my uh it seems I have to relaunch my browser. In order yeah, to yeah, yeah. Sure, sure. Give me one second, that. right? Yeah. Okay, let's do this.
All right, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, perfect, perfect, perfect. All right, so you, the book, you said, do you want to go to the book of Esther? Yeah, what you were speaking about, like verses, uh, chapter 9, verses 27 through 32. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I, I'd like to focus on there for there because the, there's a lot of things that you spoke about there that I, I agree with and I want to I want to share common ground as much as we can mm -hmm. since we both agree that this is God's word you know maybe not spoken by God but still legitimate history of the Jews right yeah yeah so 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 starting there so yeah the the Jews ordained and took upon themselves and upon their seat so they're doing this. During a time, because uh, I also agree that they're doing this during a time when they're in captivity, right? They're in exile, right? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So, so we're in agreement that that that's that's what's happening. I think you mentioned that in the video. So this also means that they're under the curses of captivity while they're taking on this festival. Okay. Right? And what's, the, what's the what's the what's the point that you're making? With point they remembered their identity. There are Jews who can live through captivity of the curses and still remember their identity according to the Bible. Mordechai, Daniel, these were people who were under the curses of exile mm -hmm. and they were Jews. Uh -huh. Yet they still remembered their identity throughout the entirety of the exile, the captivity. Okay. okay. That is that is my position. Because I think in the video you mentioned that the the scientific method of proving who the Israelites are today. You mentioned like Jeremiah 17, 4, where it says they will have a discontinuation of their heritage. And you said, how do any of these Jews, they claim that they have, you know, an unbroken chain of transmission. So they don't fit that curse. What I'm arguing is biblically, we have evidence that Jews who lived during the curses of exile were able, there were a select few, not all, right? Because as you mentioned, there were some who were left behind. There was only a remnant that returned. So you're absolutely right that there are some Jews who lost their identity and were left behind during that Babylonian exile and did not return. But there were some that did retain their identity and were able to live through an entire exile of curses and return. And that's why I'm arguing that Forgetting your identity is not essential to who Israel or Jews are today. Okay, so That's so here, here, here so here's here, here's the thing, right? That's not all of my argument. Right. right? My my argument does not does not just hinge on the fact that the scriptures say that the the Israelites right would discontinue from their heritage. Right. My mm -hmm. argument doesn't just hinge on that fact. Right. Mm -hmm. My argument hinges on not just biblical prophecy, history, and archaeology. That's what my mm -hmm. argument hinges on, right? So when we look at the curses, because Jeremiah 17 and 4 is not, per se, the curses, but it's it's some, it's the word of God, something that God spoke through Jeremiah, right? That, yeah. that, that his people would discontinue from their heritage. We can see this elsewhere in prophecy, yeah. right? So right. when we look, when looking at the, argument of the curses right the curses are 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 what explain the curses to me if the jews or israel are disobedient then some not all necessarily but some of the curses may apply to select people well, where, so oh. where are you getting that from some not all um, because there were some who lost their identity during the Babylonian exile and didn't return. And there were some who retained their identity and did return. And they both lived during the exile. Well, hold, hold on, Yehuda, right? There, there were Jews that remained in Babylon and still uh, kept their culture. They still, they still kept, you know, the commandments, right, that stayed in Babylon, right? Hence, you see the rise of what's known as the Babylonian Talmud, right? Yes, that was written. That was that was written though after um, but, that was but, written down much later. Of, of course, much later. But again, that that record to be written down had to been passed down from people who were there. Correct. Right. Well, absolutely. Yeah. So, well, so, well, well, so here's a misnomer. I want to clarify something. The Babylonian Talmud doesn't mean that it is referring to people who were specifically 
from that time of exile. They happened to be after the second exile, which we live in today, they wrote it down after the Romans destroyed the temple. They were there were a select group of Jews who were exiled once again to, to Babylon. And that's why it because there's also a Jerusalem Talmud that was written oh, in Jerusalem. Of course. But again, right. you still had you still had that does not take away from the fact that you still had Jews who did not return back to the land that were living there that still were keeping their customs. There again, probably that, were some, but there were I'm sure there were some that assimilated. I think that goes without I'm saying. Sure, I'm sure there were. The, the same yeah. thing amongst the Greeks, right? We, we can see um, Judas Maccabeus and his sons, right? They retaining their culture, right? And fighting against the the, Hellenis, the Hellenization of the anti, uh, of Antiochus, right? Right. In the, right. Well, the, that, that was post the Babylonian X. That was after the render. Uh, of course. But, but here's the thing, right? The, the curses are a cyclical thing. Right? It's yeah. something it's something that happens when what? When the Israelites are not keeping the commandments right. as a whole, correct? Right. That's why we're in exile today. Okay, so 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 as a whole, as a whole, the whole nation, God, Hashem, as you would call him, he judges nations, right? And we can see this in Jeremiah chapter 18 and verse 8. Right. If that nation repents, yes. then I will uh hold back the the the, the evil that I've spoken of it, right? Right. So the whole nation of Israel, right, hasn't done that. So right. therefore, the whole nation of Israel is in exile. And exile is one of the curses, correct? Yes. So let me ask you a question. How is it that Ashkenazim, right, can be, be considered actual descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob if they are, they are currently in the land, if they are currently there? Yeah, so... And I think this relates to what you discussed with Yosef in Jeremiah 3, right? I watched your interaction and, and you, your argument. I want to make sure that your argument is I, I'm a, representing it accurately because I don't want to, you know, debate a straw man. So your position, according to Jeremiah 3, from what I saw with your interaction with, with Yosef, was that it speaks of, it's talking about backsliding Israel, right? And so you were mentioning that the house of Israel and the house of Judah will come together from the land of the north that I caused your forefathers to inherit. And you challenged him, right? You said, how can you be in the land if Ephraim or, you know, like the house of Israel and the house of Judah aren't there, right? That mm -hmm. you, were, you were arguing. And I think you also mentioned in the video response you made to me was in Deuteronomy chapter 30, it states that all like the all the four corners of the earth, there's going to be an ingathering of the exile, and that's going to be the... So these are all talking about the Messianic era, right? The mm -hmm. future Messianic era. So in isolation, it would appear that what you are saying would be correct. However, I want to explore a passage that I don't think you've explored on this you know, in, in interactions with Jews yet that describe the events leading up to that final redemption of world peace that, uh, sorry, Jeremiah chapter uh, three, verse 18, where it says in those days, Judah, the house of Judah and the house of Israel will go together from the land of the north. And it, that's messianic era, right? We agree. All the nations will come. So before that time, there's going to be disarray, okay? Would, mm -hmm. would you like to um, join me on Zechariah chapter 12, because I, I, I want to explore that passage to see kind of what's going on here. Mm -hmm. And just for the record, right, my argument is not based off of isolation. It's, it's based off of a, a totality of scripture and looking at the biblical right. lens, right? Right. Mainly through prophecy, right? There, there has to, there must be, right, a chronology of prophecy. Of course, you have all these different prophets, right? You have all we have Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Zechariah, so forth and so forth. All of these prophets prophesying about similar things and different things, right? And mm -hmm. guess what? Every single prophecy is not going to be for uh for every single uh, right. point in time in history, right? The, the scriptures say that the scriptures were written a four time for our learning, right? That these these words were written on on ta tablets, right? Written on paper or written on on clay tablets. 
so that those who read them can can run right we can we can see this in uh the book of was it habakkuk the second chapter the vision is yet for an appointed time so there's always an appointed time for each prophecy and we need to understand the totality of prophecy and, and based off of what has already happened right we know yes. some prophecy has been fulfilled and some prophecy has not been fulfilled so we need to be able to examine it from that lens absolutely absolutely yeah so yeah so we'll we'll look at this so Let's read it together. So the burden of the word of the Lord of Israel, saith the Lord, which stretcheth the hev heavens, layeth the foundation of the earth, and formeth the spirit of man within him. Behold, I will make Jerusalem a cup of trembling unto all the people round about when they shall be in siege, both against Judah and Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. right? So the entire world is going to be against Judah and Jerusalem at some point. And and that day I will make Jerusalem a burdensome stone for people that all that burden themselves with it shall be cut in pieces through uh, though all the people of the earth will be gathered against it. And this is before the Messi Messianic era, clearly. And I don't think this has happened yet. Maybe you believe it has. I, I don't see that this has happened in history yet. So it, so on that day, say it the Lord, I will smite every horse with astonishment and his rider with madness, and I will open mine eyes upon the house of Judah, and I will smite every horse of the people with blindness. And the governors, governors of Judah will say in their heart, the inhabitants of Jerusalem shall be my strength in the Lord of their, of their hosts God. On that day, I will make the governors of Judah like a hearth of fire among wood and like the torch of fire. Now remember, they're in Jerusalem already, right? All the nations are going to Jerusalem to attack it, right? Mm -hmm. And then the house of Judah is going to be, God is going to save them. And it says they're going to be like a torch of fire and sheath, and they are going to devour all the people round about on the right and on the left. And Jerusalem shall be inhabited again in her own place, even in Jerusalem. The Lord shall... What, where are you at right now? Uh, you, you, uh, six? Zechariah 12, 7 now. I, I okay. just... Six. And the Lord shall save the tents of Judah first, that uh -huh. the glory of the house of David and the glory of the inhabitants of Jerusalem do not magnify themselves against Judah. So, mm -hmm. so you get the idea is that from what I gather from this prophecy, and maybe if you disagree, that's fine. It looks as though this is a future prophecy that has not come to fruition that predates the Messianic era. Because, right, the Messianic era is when all, as we read in, in Jeremiah 3, that's when, you know, Ephraim and everyone's happy and, and all the nations are, you know, it's a, it's, it's a world peace, but here that's not what's happening. This is pre the messianic era. Right. Mm -hmm. But it's, I don't think this has happened yet, but clearly Judah is already in the land when the entire world is attacking them. Yeah. So, I, 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 I don't see that as, as such. And okay. I, I Here's the thing, right? When we look at the pro prophets, right? The prophets, this is this is has been a thing throughout. When you read the, the prophets, right? They will bounce from time period to time period. They will talk about something that's about a specific time, and they'll talk about another thing that's about another time, right? Right. I don't think this is a proof text to prove that your people, right, the Ashkenazim, all right, Sephardim, uh, Mizraim, or, or mm -hmm. even Beta Israel, being in the land today that that, all right, that this is a proof text for that. Because here's the thing, right? If that, if your understanding of this particular verse is to be the case, right? Then, mm -hmm. then that breaks several other scriptures, right? And, and let's, let's go to a couple, right? Let's go right. to look at Hosea chapter one, right? Yeah. Hosea one in verse, uh, verse eight, it says, now when she had weaned lo Rama, she conceived and bare a son. Then right. said God, call his name lo Ami. For ye are mm -hmm. not my people, and I will not be your God. Yet the number of the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea, which cannot be measured nor numbered. And it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, ye are not my people, there it shall be said unto them, ye are the sons of the living God. So there's going to be a point in time where where Israel, right, Judah and Israel, because lo right. Ma was, in, was about uh, the Lord not having mercy on Judah, right? right. And uh, Lo Ami was for the northern kingdom or Ephraim, right? In mm -hmm. regards to them not being his people. 
right? Mm -hmm. It right. says, yet in that exile, the children of Israel will be as the sand of the sea. They cannot be measured or numbered, right? Mm -hmm. It's going to be said unto them in places that where it was said unto them that you are not my people, that you are the sons of the living God, right? Here's the point, right? Verse 11. Then shall the, ch the children of Judah and the children of Israel be gathered mm -hmm. together, meaning they're both in exile. They both must be gathered together and appoint themselves one head. That would be the Messiah. So mm -hmm. again, before the Messiah comes, right, Judah and Israel will both be exiled. Who must They must be gathered together, right. appoint themselves one head, and they shall come out of the land, for great shall be the day of Jezreel. So your understanding of Zechariah 12 breaks that. The idea that the Jews or southern kingdom is already in the land of Judah, okay, and that, you know, they're going to have to be going to war against all these other nations and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And now, you know, Israel is going to be brought afterwards. That breaks the scripture right here, right? That also breaks um, other scripture, right? Let's, where do I want to go? Let's go to the book of yeah, Hosea, right? Let's go to the book of Ezekiel. All right. Ezekiel chapter 37, right? And... I don't want to start. Um, let's start at verse 15. It says, The word of the Lord came unto me, uh, saying, Moreover, thou son of man, take thee one stick and write upon it for Judah and for the children of Israel, his companions. Take another stick and write upon it for Joseph, the stick of Ephraim, and for all the house of Israel, his companions. Right? So this, when we look at this word uh, stick, in Hebrew means a plank of wood. Right? You're going to write the names of Judah. Right, Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, his his companions. Right, you're gonna know, write the name of Ephraim, right, the son of Joseph, and all of his companions. So Manasseh, Gad, Reuben, Naphtali, so forth and so forth. Right. It says, right. and join them one to another, um, into one stick, and they shall become one in thy hand. And when the children of thy people shall speak unto thee, so so, they're, they're, this is a prophecy, right, and it's a sign for for. For a prophecy, right? Mm -hmm. In which you have to have this, this, the names of Israel, of the 12 tribes, and people are going to ask you, mm -hmm. what does this mean, right? It says, When the children of thy people shall speak unto thee, saying, Wilt thou not show us what thou means by thee? So now, this person who's, who's tasked with doing this, right, is amongst the people, right? And they're scattered, right? It mm -hmm. says, say unto them, thus saith the Lord, uh, the Lord God, behold, I will take the stick of Joseph, which is in the hand of Ephraim, and the, and the tribes of Israel, his fellows, and I'll put them with him, even with the stick of Judah, and make them one stick, and they shall be one in my hand. So we see the gathering of Judah and, and Israel yes. together, right? Not separate, right? Let's keep going. And the sticks that whereon thou writest shall be in thy hand before their eyes. Right, mm -hmm. so this has to be in in the eyes of of all of them. Now, what's so interesting is that Ezekiel, right, is a captive amongst the other amongst the first wave captives going into Babylon by the river Chabar. Right, he's mm -hmm. already a captive. Right, well, he's he, an exile. Yeah, he's an exile. Right. Yeah, and, and saying, listen, when you're going, you have to do this, right, and it's going to be for the gathering of northern and southern kingdom. But this is post split. Southern Southern Kingdom is starting to go into exile, and Northern Kingdom has already been in exile. Again, yep, yep. Right, but so this is a future thing, clearly. Oh yeah, oh yeah. This is messianic. What you are referring to is a future messianic prophecy, one hundred percent. Okay, let's keep going. It says, "And say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God: Behold, I will take the uh, children of Israel from among the heathen, and will get, uh, whether they be gone, and I will gather them on every side and bring them into their own land, and I will make them one nation, right, one nation." Uh, in the land upon the mountains of Israel. So when Judah and Israel, right, are brought back, they're going to now not be Judah and Israel. They're going to be Israel as a whole. As Judah a whole, yes. Israel, right? But they're being gathered from the other nations. Yep. Together, right? Neither shall they be divided into two kingdoms anymore at all. Neither shall they defile themselves anymore with their idols, nor with their desolate, uh, detestable things, nor with any of their transgressions. But I will save them out of all their dwelling places. Right, so we see the restitution, all right, of the children of Israel comes by way of the Lord, the Most High God, 
restoring them from their dwelling places, from wherever they are, right? Wherein they have sinned, and I will cleanse them, so shall they be my people, and I will be their God, right? Again, this coincides with uh, Hosea 1 and 10, yet in the place where it was said unto them, ye are not my people, there right. shall be said, ye are the sons of the living God. So now he's bringing us back. Right, right? the blessings, yeah. They're, they're not cursed anymore, and now they're blessed, yes. Right, verse 24, and David, my servant, shall be king over them. Clearly, this is not- This the is the Messiah. Messiah. Oh, yes, oh, this yes. Is Messiah, that is right? Absolutely. And David, my servant, shall be king over them, and they shall uh, uh, have one shepherd. They shall all, uh, also walk in my judgments and observe my statutes and do them. Right. So yes. when the children of Israel are gathered to the land, right, mm -hmm. it's Judah and Israel coming together, being united, right, and being brought to the land. That right. is key. That is important. Right. Mm -hmm. Why is that key? And, that, and, and why is that important? Because your claim is that. Judah's already in the land partially, right? And now we're trying to gather more people, but that's not what prophecy says. It says that Judah in Israel, right, will be in their other places, in their dwelling places, and will have to be brought back. They will have to be cleansed from, a, from <laughs> wickedness, cleansed from abominations, right? And then they're going to now do that cleansing. They will, will start walking in the judgments, in the statutes of the Lord. Right. Well, we don't see that happening in the land of Israel right now. Right. Tel Aviv has one of the world's largest pride parades. That's not, that's against Torah. Would you agree? Yeah. And that's why we're still in exile. How, how are you still in exile? If, uh, exile means let's let's get the definition of the word exile. Exile. I, well, I, actually, we didn't finish that scripture because I want to see there might be something we disagree with. I agree. I want to go over the definition, the biblical definition of exile using a verse in Hosea, because I think there's a really great example of that in the Bible. Um, Hosea 3, verse We, we can four. get there, but let's, let's get the, uh, the layman's term definition yeah. of exile. The state of being barred from one's native country, typically for political or punitive reasons. So in order to be in exile, you must be barred from your native country, right? If that's the case, how are you still in exile when your people are in the land? I don't believe that's the biblical definition of exile. It, it, it is the biblical definition of exile. Well, well let, let, let's let's take a look at that, right? But so let's, let's, let's can we finish out Ezekiel thirty-seven? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I'd love to. Okay, cool. All right. It says, and it says, and they shall walk in my judgments and observe my statutes and do them. Right. That's not happening in the land of Israel right now. Right. Not 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 the well, we're not in the messianic age. I agree with that. Yes. What do you mean we're not in the Messianic age? This describes the Davidic kingdom where mm -hmm. David, the Messiah, right? The future Messiah yeah. will rule. Yeah, he's and not I, here yet. He, right, he's he not has, here. He has not come yet, right? I agree, so, yes. So, so you don't agree that that guy that's parading around Crown Heights is the Messiah, right? Of course not. Okay. Hey. hey no, he's he's dead. <laughs> he's I mean, dead. he was a he was a guy, but I mean, he was he was a knowledgeable man, but I no, I don't he's dead. He's not the Messiah. Okay. All right. Let's keep going. It says, and they shall dwell in the land that I have given unto them, uh, unto my servant Jacob, wherein your fathers have dwelt, and they shall dwell therein, even they and their children and their children's children forever, and my right. servant David shall be prince over them. Right. Yeah. So how, can, how, so how can this come to pass if y'all are already dwelling there, if y'all are of the servants of Jacob? Right. Yeah. Because what we read in Zechariah, it says that the Jews before the final exile at some point or sorry, the final redemption, rather, while we're still, because I want you to read to the end of Ezekiel, and I'm going to ask you a question. I'm not sure if we agree on this. I'm, I'm curious what your theology is on this, because we haven't gotten to the verse. But let's continue reading in Ezekiel, because I want to see if we're in agreement on what will happen in the Messianic era. Okay. Cool. And, then, and then I want to go to a thus saith the Lord verse, and see if we agree there, because this is very strongly implied in the book of Zechariah, and I think it's strongly implied here. And I'm curious what uh, you. I, I think you're, you 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 don't have an understanding of Zechariah. So we'll we'll look into it because I agree. I agree. You you mentioned something. It's not just chapter twelve. I want to look at another messianic passage in Zechariah and see if because it it gives more details. All of these passages that we're we're going in very messianic passages that are giving us specific details leading up to that time and i want to make them all you know gel together because we can't reject 
Zechariah 12. I'm we not, can't I, ignore I, I, I do not reject scripture at all, right? Right. So what I why, do is, why do you disagree with the fact that Judah could be in the land before the final redemption? Because during the again, second? I, just, I just demonstrated how that breaks this prophecy. It breaks that. That cannot be true and this be true at the same time. It just cannot. This, well, let, 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 me try and, let me try and solve the problem for you like this. I'm not saying, remember, I'm a Jew. I don't live in Israel. I, don't I live in America. America. So not all of the Jews live in the land. We are still in exile. That yeah. is my position. For the, rec for the record, I do not believe that you are a descendant of Judah, that you are a descendant of Benjamin. I know that. That's what the debate is about. Levi, right? I don't believe that you're a descendant of the man named Jacob, right? I believe that you, you are a descendant of people who converted to the ways of Jacob, but I do not believe that you are an actual descendant of Jacob. And I do not believe that you, right, and nor your people fit the curses, which God said would be a sign on the Israelites due to disobedience, right? Because, I, because we never forgot I, our identity? Is that why? Uh, no, this, that's not the, the only reason, right? It, well, a, I, Daniel never forgot his identity, and he was under the curses. Uh, so again, he's not a Jew, uh, according uh, to again, you? Uh, no, again, I did not say that. It's not about the necessarily the beginning, right? The curses. The Thank you for saying that. Thank you for saying that. So I, please, it's not, I wait, don't wait, wait, want no, you guys no, say no, that. No, you're who to slow down, right? It's not the curses. It's, it's not the, the forgetting alone. I right? want to hear that. I want to hear that again. It's not, the, it's it's not, not the, the forgetting. It's not the, it's no, not wait, 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 wait. It's not the forgetting alone. Right. It's coupled with the fact that the people that that you descend from and the people that are in the world known as Jews. Right. Do not go through or have not gone through these curses. Was Daniel put on a ship as a slave to Egypt? Daniel. Yeah. He was he under was, the curses. Right. And you claim yeah, that Daniel, my Daniel, ancestors on, weren't Daniel, put on a ship. Daniel was under Daniel was under the curses. He identifies that in Daniel the ninth chapter, I believe, verse 11. Right. But I, I have never seen any record of Daniel going into slavery into Egypt on a ship. I, I, I don't. Right. So why would you put me to that standard? Why would you say what? Why would you argue? Again, the, the vision is like, yet for an time, sir. The, 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 that standard is what I'm saying. No, no, no. Hold, 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 no, no, no. Yehuda, slow down, right? The vision is for an appointed time. When I look at your people as a whole, right? And when I look at my people as a whole, right. I look at these curses, it's abundantly clear that it's talking about us. And the fact that we're calling them to mind, as the scripture said, right, proves more that we are the people who fit these curses. When I look at your people, right, and look at these curses and how you line up with them, there's no lining up because you guys do not go through these curses. You guys have not been going through these curses. It's just a fact, right? But let's keep, let's continue here in Ezekiel 37. Let's continue, let's continue yeah. And they shall dwell in the land that I have given unto them, uh, unto uh, Jacob, my servant. They're going to have to be gathered, right? They're going to have to appoint themselves one head, and then they're going to dwell in the land, right? Wherein your fathers have dwelt, and they shall dwell therein, even they and their children and their children's children forever. And my servant uh, David shall be their prince forever. Moreover, I will make a covenant of peace with them, right? Uh, it shall be an everlasting covenant with them, and I will place them and multiply them. And will set my sanctuary in the midst of them. Forever. Right. So the, what does that mean to you? What is the sanctuary? What does that it's refer? It's talking to? about the the temple, the temple, right? It's Preferred. going to have, yes, the yes. Be, the temple will have to be built, right? Yes, yes. Okay, I'm glad we agree on wait, that. Wait, 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 wait. But here's the thing, right? It's it, it's a it's a process, right? Yeah. In Israel, not in land, right? They must be gathered from their dwelling places. They must be cleansed, right? Once they're cleansed, they're pointing themselves one head. Once they appoint themselves one head, they go into the land and dwell in the place, right? And then there's the sanctuary built, right? That's that's the steps right here. Now, but, let's, according let's, to Zechariah, Judah's going to be in the land and all the nations are going to attack it. Sir, slow down, right? We this, just read it. No, you're, no, no, you're again, ignoring again, Zechariah again, as well? Again, sir, there has to be a chronology to prophecy. There so when be. did Zechariah 12 happen? Are you, are you saying this already happened? The entire world I, went listen, 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 listen. I'm not saying whether it happened or it, it, and it's I know time. you're not no, because no, 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 listen, to what, no, listen to what I'm brother. No, I can't say brother because you're not my brother. <laughs> Sir, let me finish saying what I'm saying, right? 
it's abundantly clear that there is a process, right? There's a process of how things happen. There's step by steps. Step one, do this. Step two, do that, right? Step one, Judah and Israel, right? They're not united and they are in the lands of their captivities, right? They're in their dwelling places, right? Step two, they are gathered, they are cleansed. Step three, they set a king over them, one head over them, right? They And now they're starting to keep the commandments, right? Because there's a covenant of peace being given unto them, right? We, we can see this in Ezekiel as well, right? Yes, yes we do. Then they're going to dwell in the land, right? Let's keep reading. It says, uh, and I will set my sanctuary in the midst of them. Now the temple's being built, right? It says, my tabernacle also shall be with them. Yea, I will be their God and they shall be my people. Amen. And the heathen, right? The goyim shall know that I, the Lord, do sanctify Israel when my sanctuary shall be in the midst of them forever. So all right. the nations are going to know, all right, that we have the true and living God. This, this coincides with Jeremiah 16, 19, where the nations are going to say, surely we have inherited lies. Right. Right, Isaiah 2, where all nations are flowing unto us. Zechariah, I think that's 8, where uh, they will- Zechariah 8, that's actually where I want to go. They'll take the skirt of him that is a Jew. Yes, right? yes. Can, can, can we please go to that chapter? Sure, we can go to that chapter. I'd love to go to that chapter. You're reading my mind, man. This is great. I'm reading your mind. I, I doubt that. Yeah, so let's- uh, let, So, okay, so we agree this is a future prophecy, right? This is Messianic times? Yeah. Let's move up a little bit to verse 19. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the fast of the fourth month, the fast of the fifth, the fast of the seventh, the fast of the tenth, shall be to the house of Judah, right? Mm -hmm. The house of Judah, joy and gladness and cheerful feasts, therefore love the truth and peace. So since this is a prophecy about the house of Judah, right? The Jews, Yehudim, what does this verse mean to you? Because clearly it concerns the house of Judah. What, what, is, what are these fasts? Are you familiar with them? I haven't I haven't studied this part. Um, okay, so let me educate you on what this is. These you're, are you're, not, you're going to educate me on anything, sir. Look, you said you didn't know what these fasts because are. The, the, My the, the Lord have been his fasting word on, on these days for over two thousand years, and you claim to be the Jews of this prophecy, and you have no idea what they are. Interesting. Who fit? In, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold on. Why don't you, 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 why don't you in, do a little in, research? In, 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 interesting. Why don't what, you do a little research on Ashkenazi Jews, Sephardi Jews? Sir, and, I, I, sir, I don't care what Ashkenazim do. I, you, I, I, we all do it. No, 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 Jews, and, 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 all and, and, of us guess, do it, my friend. And, and guess what, sir? The fact that you're claiming that proves that you're not a descendant of Judah. Just like Daniel they, they, never they, forgot his identity no, 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 no. and somehow he's a Jew. Like, wow. Yehuda, How does Yehuda, that work? Yehuda, 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 right? You don't believe Daniel's a Jew because he I, I, never I, I, forgot I, 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 his identity? Did those words ever come from my mouth, ever? No, because you can't so, say so, that. So, so don't say But don't, then why do you hold so me to that standard? Yehuda. Why do you say that I have Yehuda, to forget my identity Yehuda, in Yehuda, order to be a Jew? Yehuda. Don't say simple things like that because I don't 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 try to put words in my mouth. I never said that Jew, Daniel was not a Jew. Daniel's a prince. Then why I, am I not a Jew? Because my people remember to keep these fasts, like oh the prophecy God, says. God, Lord, and, and you're a Jew because Lord you forgot about these, and you have no sir, idea what they are. Sir, sir, on January third, Jews Yehuda, around the world will Yehuda. be fasting on the fast of the tenth, okay. and you have no idea what that means, sir. Sir, the fact that you and your people have this continuity and you're claiming to have been keeping Torah and keeping fast and keeping all these customs for so long proves that you are not a descendant of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And guess and neither what? is Daniel because no, 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 Daniel no, 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 no. never forgot. He kept the customs. I'm, he I'm played. Going, I'm, you're on mute right now for the record, right? When we're looking at da Daniel, right? Is not at a point in time where he's been completely castigated from his cult customs, as the scriptures say that the Israelites will. Okay, it says that that, it, that will happen, right? And we can examine that, right? But the fact that you're showing me something that you say, "Oh yeah, you, I, I've been keeping this for two thousand years," you have not been keeping anything for two thousand years because you sound like you're less than even thirty years old. If that's so you haven't been keeping anything for 
for nowhere near 2,000 years, right? Your people very well, very well may have, right? And that's perfectly fine, right? But that disproves the fact that they are the Israelites because the Israelites would not be keeping their customs, sir, right? Now I will unmute you. So do you know what these fasts are all about? Do you have any idea why we do this? Tell me. Tell me why you do them. Because we are mourning the destruction of the Holy Temple. That is why. We are in exile because the temple is destroyed. Not because we're not in the, not because we're not in the land. That is not oh, what defines so, exile. So, so is, without the temple, the Let's, messianic era will happen when the temple is built. We are in agreement with that. No, no, no. That, no, no, that we no, cannot no, be in no, the land. Yehuda, Yehuda, stop. Stop, sir. I know you want me to stop. No, 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 you know no, no, I'm no. right. Yehuda, do you believe that the temple must be built before the Messiah comes? No, I believe that Messiah will build the temple. Messiah is going to build the temple? Yes. He's going to physically build the temple? Yes. Or is he, or is he he's going to physically build the temple? Yes. How? Why would the Messiah, who's the king, why is he? Why would he be building the temple? You want to go to Zechariah chapter 6? and we'll... you, 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 you want to go to Isaiah 60? Let's, let's go to Isaiah 60 real quick, right? Because I'm going to... As long as we go to Zechariah six, then uh... you can go to Zechariah. But let, let's 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 go to uh, Zach, Isaiah sixty, right? Um, where do I want to start? Um, let's start from the top. It says, "Arise and shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness of the people, but the Lord shall arise upon thee." And his glory shall be seen upon thee, right? And the Gentiles, the Goyim, shall come to thy light, and kings to the brightness of thy rising. Yep. Lift up every, uh, uh, lift up thine eyes and, and round about and see. All they gather themselves together, they come to thee. Thy sons uh, shall come from afar, and thy daughters shall be nursed at thy side. Then thou shalt see and flow together, and thine heart shall fear and be uh, enlarged. Because of the abundance of the seed shall be converted unto thee, the forces of the Gentiles shall uh, come unto thee. So, during this this time, right, this messianic period, guess mm -hmm. what? the The forces or the riches of the Gentiles, the other nations, are coming unto Jerusalem, are coming unto Israel. Right? Mm -hmm. um, we can skip verses uh, six, seven, and eight. Right? Verse nine: Surely the isle shall wait for thee, uh, the ships of Tarshish first, to bring thy sons from afar. Their silver and their gold with them unto the Lord uh, uh, thy God and the Holy One of Israel, because he hath glorified thee, right? And the sons of strangers shall build up thy walls. So the people that's building up the walls is the sons of the strangers, not the king, not the Messiah. And their kings shall minister unto thee. The kings of the other nations are going to serve or minister unto Israel. For in my wrath I smote thee, but in my favor have I had mercy on thee. Therefore, thy gates shall be open continually. They shall not be shut day nor night that men may bring unto thee the forces, which is the riches of the Gentiles and that their kings may be brought, right? Mm -hmm. So again, the Messiah is not going to be building the temple, right? He's going to be overseeing the, the, the building of the infrastructure of Israel. Why? Because we have to build up the desolate places, right? We have to build up the desolate places, but guess what? It's going to be the heathen doing the physical labor thereof, right? Let's go. Let's go to the next chapter to, to further cement this point home, right? Isaiah sixty one and one: The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord hath anointed me to preach the good uh, good tidings, the gospel unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prisons to them that are bound, right? So. The, the good news is that those that are bound, those that are brokenhearted, those that are in uh, mourning, or right, those that are captives, right? Those that are prisoners, right? They're going to be set free, right? They're going to be delivered, right? To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God to all that mourn, right? So we're in these of uh, these states, right? And then, right, the Lord's vengeance is going to come upon the earth, right? Judgment, messianic. Would you agree? Yes, absolutely. Okay, cool, right? To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion and to give for them the beauty of ashes, the uh, oil of joy for, them, uh, for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. And they shall and they shall build the old waste 
and they shall raise the, the former desolations, and they shall repair the waste cities in the desolations for many generations. And the strangers shall stand and feed your flocks, and the sons of aliens shall be the plowmen and your vine dressing. But ye shall be named the priests of the Lord. Men shall come unto uh, call you the ministers of our God. Ye shall eat the riches of the Gentiles, and in their glory shall thou boast yourselves, right? So we see that the Gentiles, right, they are the ones who are building up or doing the hard, laborious work. In the in the in the building up of the infrastructure, right? In Israel, right? Not the actual king. Okay. Do you so, agree? So do you admit that you were wrong on that? The, the Messiah is not going to build it himself. I think there's other scripture that I think you're right. Look, I'm not denying the fact that other people will have um, you know, will contribute. Just like in the Torah, it says that, you know, the primary architect was Bitzalel. He created, you know, along with, you know, Ohali, like they created the Mishkan, the original tabernacle. They Ooh. did that, but they also got help from the nation, right? Similarly, King Solomon, he was the primary architect uh, oh, Dave, through David's blueprint, but he was we accredited to King Solomon, oh, not cool. to the the slaves and the people. So likewise, we attribute the third temple. Oh, say what now? Say that again. Sorry. So Solomon didn't physically build the temple, correct? I said he he had a he did he had, he had, he had slaves build it, right? You think he had no hand in building the temple? He had to have built some of it, sir. You, you, you think he didn't get sir. his hands dirty at all? You sir. think he just sat sir. there? Sir. Like sir. <laughs> sir, the Messiah, the Messiah is the Messiah for a reason. He's going to be the king. The king is not getting his hands dirty and building something when there's slaves to do so. Okay, so let's go to Zechariah 6 and, and let's see if that holds scrut holds up the scrutiny. Okay. Zechariah 6, verses 11 through 13. It says, And you shall take silver and gold, and you shall make crowns, and place them upon the head of Joshua, the son of Jehozadak, the high priest. And you will speak to him saying, so said the Lord of hosts, saying, behold, a man whose name is the shoot or the branch that Semach in Hebrew, who will spring up out of his place and build the temple of the Lord. And he shall build the temple of the Lord and he shall bear glory and he shall sit and rule on his throne. And the priest shall be on his throne and a council of peace shall be between them. Is this about the Messiah? Yes or no? Of course, it's about the Messiah. Him, yes, he's going to build the temple. Right? Exactly. So there you go. No, 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 no. no, no. <laughs> there you go, man. Yehuda, <laughs> calm down. Slow down. Slow down. Right, look, I'm already. Right. Listen, I'm I, I, listen, 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 be quiet. Listen, I be quiet, right? I agree with this scripture, right? I do not. I do not believe that this means that he's actually going to be one. You know. Hammering, uh, hewing wood, and 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 and, and so so out fine. We're, we're, I think we're on we're in agreement here. You're you're playing semantics. No, no it's not about playing semantics. Again, <laughs> the Messiah, the King, is not going to be doing the physical labor. Look, look, look this king. is this is not I'm what sorry. I'm arguing. Okay, I think we're at a miscommunication here. I'm not. I'm saying that the Messiah's role. The Messiah, the we both agree that the Messiah is intimately connected with the temple. Of course, the, the, the yes, that, it's of, all I'm saying. Of, of course, of course, but he's not physically doing the, the, the building or the working. Whatever, I don't. It hasn't happened but, yet. But, but, but again, the Messiah. But, hold on, hold on. but again, right? How can your people be the people if the Messiah has to gather them? If the Messiah is the one that has to gather them, because the Messiah, according to Jer uh, sorry Zechariah chapter twelve, does not come until after the entire world gathers against Jerusalem. That's not true. Let's let let. let when did that happen? If they, if it already happened. Sir, sir, Paul, let, let, let's, oh, so let's you're telling that. me after the messianic era, there's going to be a war after world peace. So how sir, is that messianic no, era? No, 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 no. So no. when does Zechariah? Sir, sir, come sir. To let, let, let's let, let's 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 demonstrate you. how your how your understanding breaks breaks these other scriptures. Right? Right, what I'm is right? your understanding? Wait, 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 let's, 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 demonstrate, let's demonstrate how it breaks your understanding, right? Because let's let's look let's look at this prophecy. Let's look at chronology. Let's look at how these things must come to pass, right? Um, can you see my screen? Yeah, I see it.
Okay. Right? Let's go to Ezekiel 36. Right? And let's start at verse... Because uh, the, the top part, right? I, I definitely want to demonstrate and look at the top part, right? Verses 1 through through 6, right? That's very important, right? Sure. But let's, let's go right here. Um, verse 16. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, when the house of Israel... Uh, of Israel dwelt in their own land, they defiled by it by their own way and their doings. Their uh doing their doings, their way was before me as the uncleanness of a removed woman, right? Mm -hmm. Wherefore I poured out my fury upon uh, uh upon them for the blood that they shed upon the land, and for their idols wherewith they uh had polluted it, and I scattered them among the heathen, so they're scattered, right? And they were uh, they were dispersed. Through the countries according to their way and according to their doings, I judged them. Right. And when uh they entered unto the heathen, whither they went, they profaned my holy name. Right. When they uh said uh to them, These are the people of the Lord are gone forth out of this land. So again, this is exile, right? They're, mm -hmm. they're, they're, and they're profaning the name of the Lord, all right, amongst these heathens, right? Let's jump down, right? Verse uh 22. Therefore, say unto the house of Israel, thus saith the Lord God. I do this not for your sakes, O house of Israel, but for mine holy name's sake, which ye have profaned among the heathen whither ye went. Right? So again, Israel's still scattered, right? It says, I will sanctify my great name, which was profaned among the heathen, which ye have profaned in the midst of them. And the heathen shall know that I am the Lord, save the Lord God, when I shall be sanctified in you before their eyes. We, we just read this in Isaiah 60, correct? See how yeah. that goes? Okay, cool. Yeah, 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 absolutely. It says, for I will take you from among the heathen. Right. I will take you from among the heathen, right? This yeah. is the house of Israel. And gather you out of all countries and will bring you into your own land. Then will I sprinkle clean water upon you, right? And ye shall be clean from all your filthiness. And from all your idols will I cleanse you, right? What's the reason why the Israelites were scattered from the land of Israel? They were disobedient to the Torah. They were disobedient to the Torah. Are there people in the land of Israel that you are claiming to be Israelites being disobedient to Torah? Yeah, absolutely. Are there are there are there uh, LGBTQ pride parades going on in the land of Israel? Looks like it. Is is that is that disobedient to Torah? Oh yeah. So how are your people, the people of God, right, in the land of Israel, breaking the commandments of God, right, and yet they're still in the land and not being exiled, as God said would happen if you are profaning my name and profaning my holy land well since you don't like zachariah 12 and you basically you answer that question Bible, let's go to zachariah 14 and can see you answer that question sir zachariah 12 that is no, my can, answer no, can, no can, can you answer this question how would no let's 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 let's, uh, pay, let's pay close attention yeah god says that the israelites will be scattered for breaking commandments right they will be amongst the heathen for breaking yes. the commandments yes he for for defiling the land, correct? Yes. Is, is is LGBTQ behavior is that does that defile the land? We just had this discussion. It's does not it Torah. Land? It's it's something that is not according to Torah. Does I does agree. It defile the land, yes or no? I guess on some level, it's, I don't. It's an abomination, right? That's what the Torah says. Okay, cool. So, can you be doing abominable things of the Lord and still be in the land and not be being judged for it? You can be judged for it, but like I said, the messianic and, era. And one, the judgment, and one of the judgments is getting cast, getting exiled out of the land, correct? Yes, and the temple is not okay, standing. Yeah. But, but okay, okay, cool. That is what exile is is ultimately. Exile, exile, exile does not necessarily mean oh, the temple is not standing. Of course, the temple is not standing, right? Because it got destroyed, right? But again, right, right. that yeah. is what that is the core of what exile represents. No, it's not the, the core. Ex, no, the core of what exile is is you being out of the land. That's if we look at Zechariah 12, it can't be because oh it's referring God. to sir, sir, is already sir, in the land. Sir, sir, sir. How in the world sir, could you answer, be attacked answer by all the nations of the world uh, if sir. your definition of exile is Judah can't ever be in the land before the messianic era? Sir, sir. You have to throw out Zechariah 12, my no, friend. No, 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 I don't have to throw out anything. Right? What we need to throw 14. out is you. let's look at 14. We're, you have the same no, problem. Wait, wait, no, 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 no. We're, we're gonna stay right here, right. We're going to stay right here. That's what we're doing, right? Do it says, listen, listen. It says that 
the Israelites, they profane the name of the Lord, they profane the land, right? And they got cast out of the land, yeah. right? They will be they, they will be sent to among all the heathens, right? But the Lord's going to bring them back, right? From these lands of the heathen. He's going to sprinkle clean water upon them, right? As yeah. you see right here in verse 25. From all your filthiness is, is, is LGBTQ filthy according to Torah. Why do you keep asking me this? I've answered this it, twice to you. It is, correct. Stop asking me the same question it, it, it over and over again. It, it I get correct. that you have no answer to Zechariah 12, it, my it, friend. It, it, is, it is correct. We, I answered you twice, man. Stop well, okay. asking the same so, question the record, over and over again. It is, right? So his people are the Israelites, right? But there's filthiness going on in the land. Hmm, okay. And from all your idols will I cleanse you, right? So you have to be cleansed, right? It says, a new heart will I also give you. And a new spirit will I put within you, and I will take you away the stony heart out of uh, thy, your flesh, and I will give you a heart of flesh. This is the circumcision of the heart, right? Yes. Something that, that Hashem, God, was telling the Israelites while they were even in the wilderness. It says, and I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes, right. and you shall keep my judgments and do them, and ye shall dwell in the land that I gave to your fathers. Yes, future. You cannot, you, they, hold on, hold on. You cannot be in the land of Israel profaning it, all right, with abominations, right, as was currently happening in the land of Israel right now, and you be the people. Then this, how do you this, explain Zechariah 12? How? 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 Listen, how do you explain this? Answer my question. How can that how can 12 explains it? It says we're in the land and all the nations attack us. That hasn't happened. Look at Zechariah 14. It says the exact same thing. Oh, it goes into even more detail. Again, 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 in order to be in the land, you have to be cleansed. So it's clearly this there's, there's a, a chronology of prophecy. Zechariah 12. It doesn't, doesn't say that covered. the people Zechariah 12, in Zechariah 12, 12 does it say that they were cleansed before or after they Whoa. came to the land? Sir, you cannot use Zechariah 12 as a proof text as to how your people are the people, right? Because that will break what Ezekiel <laughs> said. Dude, I know you didn't know this, and I know this is new information oh to you, God. just like Zechariah 8, 19 sir, was. Sir, 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 I'm sir, sorry sir, that your worldview has been Yehuda, Yehuda, destroyed. Yehuda, Yehuda, Yehuda. We're going to do it one thing at a time. This is the eighth day of Hanukkah, and my people will never die. Sir. Your people are Amalek, and your people will surely die. Oh, Amalek. now we're Amalek? We were, let's see, we're Yafes, we're, I, 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 you guys I, I, can't decide I, I, what we are. Yehuda, Yehuda, Yehuda. I, I, I do not think that you're a descendant of, of, of I Yehuda. know you don't. Right? I know I know who you are. The, the Bible would say otherwise. Yehuda, the Bible, does, the Bible, I've been using the Bible, and the Bible has been disproving the fact that you are an Israelite. Right? So it's, you, you ignore Zechariah 12. Zechariah 12 sir, is not sir, in your Bible. Sir, sir, it's in my Bible, of course, right? But again, we're going so to- When does Zechariah 12 happen? When is Judah in the land, sir. and when does all the nations of the earth attack it? Tell me. Sir, when's that going to happen? Sir, sir. Before Yehuda, or after the Messianic Yehuda, era? Yehuda, 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 right? Again, you, sir, are not- an Israelite, you do not have understanding of the Torah. You do not have understanding of prophecy at all. Because and, and, and know how I know? Because you cannot demonstrate to me how your people fit Ezekiel 36. You cannot prove to me how your people fit Ezekiel 37. Your people are in the land currently, yes? Yes, just like oh, 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 Zechariah right. 12 people, says we will be. You're, 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 no, no, Zachariah, listen. You're Taking a Zechariah 12 to, to fit it to force fit yourself into it, just like you and the curses and the will we'll, we'll, we'll not be tolerated. And we'll, Get we'll, your we'll, identity, not, come on, come going, on, man. That's not going to fly here, sir. We, <laughs> it is, sir, sir. Ezekiel 36 says that the Israelites will be cleansed, they will be in the lands of the other of other nations, they will be cleansed and then brought into the land, right? Your people are defiling the land. How can they be the Israelites if they have to be in other lands for defiling the land and then cleansed and brought back to the land? How does okay. that make sense? Okay, let, let me try and see. Explain how that makes sense. Are, are you going to take a bunch of blacks, Puerto Ricans, and Native Americans and go and attack Jerusalem so that you can fulfill Zechariah 12? Is that how you're going to make this? Well, I'm not, are you going to go I, I, and, I, I, and get a I'm band of, uh, you know? Yehuda, Yehuda, Yehuda. I'm, I'm not going to allow you to use inflammatory uh, uh, speech, right? 
I'm not going to attack anyone. I do not advocate for the attack. How does Zachariah 12 I do not, wait, 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 wait. You're in your quiet. You're going to be quiet right now. I do not advocate for violence. I do not advocate for the attacking of anyone, right? I actually preach the contrary. I preach against violence, sir, for the record. I, I preach to my people, the Israelites, to stop committing violence. That's what I do. I'm not going to let you, sir, all right, try to raise up inflammatory speech, all right, and accusations of me or anyone in my movement, right? My movement is of peace. My movement is of love for my people. That's what my movement is for. And my movement is not for the attacking of anyone. So you're not going to, to use that speech. I'm just not going to allow you to do it. You're not going to raise up this, this accusation. Oh, are, are you going to bring a whole bunch of blacks and Hispanics to Israel and attack? I'm not attacking nobody, sir. Don't do that. So can okay, you, can so you answer, how is Zechariah 12? Can you answer the question now? I, Zechariah 12 refutes everything you said. Oh my God. Zechariah 12 does not refute everything I said. So how do you it's, understand? No, no, Yehuda, Yehuda. How do you understand? Hey, Tell me. Yehuda, you Yehuda understand explain to me, sir, sir, this is what you're going to do right now. You are going to explain to me how your people can be in the land, defiling it, right, with kosher pork, right, with LGBTQ parades, right, in Tel Aviv. That's the world's largest one. How can these people be doing these things, defiling the land of Israel, right, and be the children of Israel when actually, God says that they must get... I, I, I will show you. Attitude. I will show you. I will show you. Zechariah 14 actually explains this. Okay? Okay? Let's so see. So let's go to Zechariah 14. It explains let's see. it. Let's see. Oh, sorry. I thought you were going to pull it up. Oh, okay. My bad. I, you can't see my screen? No. Okay, so it says, Behold, the day of the Lord cometh, and thy spoil shall be divided in the midst of thee. For I will gather all the nations against Jerusalem to battle, just like it says in Zechariah 12. And the city shall be taken, the houses rifled, and the women ravished. So look, we're going to be punished. There's going to be select people who are going to be punished in the land for what they're doing by other nations, right? I wasn't trying to be hateful in what I was saying. I was trying to fit it with the prophecy. You claim you're the real Jews. If you're going to fit this prophecy, then you better get yourself in the land now because that's what this is saying. The Jews... I, no, no, I, don't have to, I don't have to get to the land. I don't have to get to the land to fill the, the prophecy. The scripture said that the Lord's going to gather us from the places in which we've been scattered. That's how I'm going to get into the but land. Before that happens, Judah is going to be attacked by all the nations. That's what Zechariah 12 and 14 state. It's the let, same let, thing. Okay, okay, let's see. Let's see. So here, you, you want to see what happens? It says Jerusalem is going to be punished for what it's been doing. So, okay, you want to go on and on about all the horrible things that, that is going on in Israel? Look, we're going to be punished. We're going to be cursed for this. And the nations, just like they did to us during the Babylonian exile when they destroyed us and, and pillaged our city, it's going to happen again. It's going to be bloody. It's not going to be good. And we're going to suffer for that. Okay? That's curses if I ever saw one. Okay? Mm -hmm. But then what's going to happen... Okay. Right? It says, Sounds what? Sounds good. I know you want this to happen to us, but here's- No, 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 I'm not saying, <laughs> sir, no, I'm, 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 not, I'm not saying that like that. Oh, okay, no, fine. I'm saying, you, you, your, your, your fitting of yourself to this, it sounds good. Your explanation sounds good. Go ahead. Okay, and the residue of the people shall not be cut off from the city. Then the Lord shall go forth and fight against those nations when he, so this is describing the same thing in Zechariah 12, where first we're going to be, just you know look like we're being defeated jerusalem is going to be attacked and there's going to be people that are going to die it's not going to be good okay I, like i said i wasn't trying to attack your character i'm trying to fit with the prophecies this is what it says i, don't I know you're that. trying to fit with the prophecies i know you are i know you I, are. I, I, this is reality th 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 thanks for putting that on the record that you're trying to fit yourself into the prophecies cool guys. this it. is reality we're already in the mm -hmm. land and it says that judah mm -hmm. is already going to be in the land before the final redemption that's what this is describing okay <laughs> That's what it says. And this, then it where, says... Where does it say that at? I showed you in Zechariah 12. Is this not the same description of what's happening in Zechariah 12? Let, let's is, see. Keep is going. this a different time keep, when keep all going. the nations of the world go against Jerusalem? Is there two separate times? I don't know. Anyway, hmm. so in his feet will stand on the day of the Mount of Olives, which is before Jerusalem in the east, and the Mount of Olives shall cleave in the midst thereof in the east and the mountains. So, okay, so it's talking about all these valleys and mountains removed toward the north and half of it from the south. 
and ye shall flee to the valley of the mountains, for the valley of the mountains shall reach Azal. Yea, yea, shall flee, and like as ye fled from the before the earthquake in the days of Uzziah, king of Judah, and the Lord my God shall come, and all the saints with thee, and it shall come to pass on that day that the light shall not be clear nor dark. But it shall be one day which will be known as to the Lord, not day nor light nor night, but it shall come to pass that at evening time it shall be light. So it's going to be a very unique time that's obviously has not happened yet. And it shall be on that day that the living waters shall go out from Jerusalem, half of them toward the former sea and half of them toward the hinder sea in the summer and in the winter shall it be. Now God over God will be king over all. And the Lord shall be king over all the earth. On that day, there should be one Lord in his name, one. All the land shall be turned as a plain from Geba to Ramon, south of Jerusalem, and it shall be lifted up and inhabited in her place from Benjamin's gate unto the place of the first gate, unto the corner's gate, from the tower of Hanael, and unto the king's wine presses. And men shall dwell in it, and there shall be no more utter destruction but Jerusalem, shall be safely inhabited, just like described in Zechariah 8. And this shall be the plague where within the Lord will smite all the people who have fought against Jerusalem. Their flesh shall consume away while they stand upon their feet and their eyes shall consume away in their holes and their tongue shall consume away in their mouth. So I wouldn't want to be any of the nations going up against the people in Jerusalem before the Messianic era comes. It, it doesn't look like it's going to be pretty for them. And it shall come to pass on that day that a great tumult from the Lord shall be among them. And they shall lay hold every everyone in the hand of his neighbor and his hand shall rise up against the hand of his neighbor. And Judah shall fight at Jerusalem and the wealth of the heathen around about shall be gathered together. Gold and silver apparel in great abundance. Mm -hmm. and, and so shall the plague of the horse, the mule of the camel and the ass and all the beasts that shall be in these tents as this plague. And it shall come to pass. Now, this is a really significant verse. It shall come to pass that everyone that is left of the nations which came against Jerusalem shall even go up from year to year to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, and shall keep the feast of tabernacles. So we will know that this war has happened and has been resolved when all the nations will go to Jerusalem in the third temple and celebrate the Feast of Tabernacles. This has not happened yet. And it shall be that of those who- has not happened yet. What? Of course, this has not happened yet. Right. And the, but it, but yeah. how, how, how does this begin to even answer my question? Because it says that the Jews will already be in the land when they are attacked by all the nations of the world before some of the, not all where the does, Jews, where remember? Does yeah, yeah. Where does it say that here? In Zechariah 12. Sir, 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 sir. It says that Judah will be in the land and all the nations will attack it. We sir, read it. Sir, again, let, let's let's slow down, right? We, we have to look at things, right? In a chronological order, right? So when does that happen? No, 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 sir, 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 just sir, sir, right? In order for the Israelites to get brought back in the land, they must be cleansed, right? They must be cleansed, right? It's going to be beautiful. The war, the war is going to be over, right? But again, let's 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 look about this war, right? We we were in Ezekiel thirty six. Right. See, Ezekiel 36, 37, and 38 are all crucial to understand. Yeah. Right? Absolutely. And, and your and your understanding of Zechariah 12, right, breaks Ezekiel 36, it breaks uh Ezekiel 37, and it breaks Ezekiel 38, right? What is so, your understanding of Zechariah 12? Let's let's saying let's, that mine breaks it. So give me your understanding of it. When does it happen? Listen, let's 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 establish this first and then we'll get into that, right? Let's look at Ezekiel 37 because we have to, things must be, must needs be, right, declared, right? And and we have to, we're, 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 when we're looking at prophecy, right, we, we're putting pieces of a puzzle together. Would you agree? Absolutely. So, so we have to put things in their proper place, right? So again, we see according to Ezekiel 36, right, in the beginning, right, we haven't got there yet, right? We, we see at the end that they'll be gathered, right? They'll be cleansed, right? They'll be put in the land, right? And they'll keep the commandments, right? 
when the Israelites are in the land, they're going to be keeping the commandments, right? And we can see this with other prophecy, right? Before we go to Ezekiel 38, right? Because what you're describing with Zechariah 14 is what Ezekiel 38 is in, in reference to, right? So before we go, let's go to Ezekiel uh, De uh, Deuteronomy 30. Yeah. Deuteronomy 30, right? In verse uh in verse one it says and it shall come to pass with all these things come upon thee the blessing and the curse which i have set before thee thou shalt call them to mind among the nations right all the nations whither the lord thy god have driven thee and shall return unto the lord thy god so in order or in order for the israelites to get put in the land again right they must return unto the lord thy god their god and obey his voice meaning keep the commandments according to all that i command thee this day thou and thy children and with all thy heart and with all thy soul, that then, before that, then, right? Once you do that, once you call to mind amongst where you've been scattered, right? So you're still scattered, and then you're going to start to keep the commandments. That's starting of the cleansing process, right? Returning to the Lord and keeping his commandments. Yeah, so so that's then, not before, but that then the Lord thy God will turn thy captivity, meaning take you from captivity. Would you agree? Yes, for the entirety of the, like, this is leading up to the ultimate messianic era. Yes. Ultimate okay, cool. Oh, okay, cool. So, again, your you, your people are in the land of Israel profaning it right now to this day, right? Not keeping the commandments. How, how are they the people? Like I said, according to Zechariah 12 and 14, we're going to be attacked by all the nations. Sir, you're, 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 the way that you look at things, break other scriptures, right? The scriptures cannot break each other. It, it, it doesn't because what you're missing is that I'm not saying that all the Jews are in Israel right now, okay? You're, Sir, you're, you're, you're the vast majority of the argument by saying, oh, well, how are all you in Israel now? We're not all. I never said, I never said all. scattered I, among I, the world. Sir, 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 I never said all, right? So then why can't we harmonize the scripture? Let's make this work. Let's sir, make this work. Sir, yes, we can now to sir, fit Zechariah. Yes, sir, sir, slow down, right? We're, we're harmonizing the scriptures right now. Right? How do you harmonize Zechariah that Jews are in Israel before? Sir, sir, final you're election? not a Jew. You're not a Jew. You're not a descendant of the yeah, man. Yeah, then let's let's say, you, sir, are sir. there a bunch of black people? So that's why I asked oh you, are God, a bunch of black sir. people going to come and take the land and oh then all God. the nations are going to attack all the black people in, in Jerusalem? Is that, that's why I asked sir, you that question. Sir, sir, I wasn't sir. trying to be racist Yahuda, or anything. Yahuda. I was using your view. You claim, how do you sir. fit Zechariah 12? Sir, your view of scripture is horrendous, right? Because again, your your view of, of scripture breaks other scriptures. You cannot do that, right? Your understanding of this verse cannot break what this verse is saying, right? It, 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 let, let me explain it, how it, how it hold, hold, do, do, hold on. Do the prophets contradict each other? No, and that's what I'm. I'm, oh, I, I'm oh, going okay, to okay. So, right prophet, so, so for the record, the prophets do not break each other, right? They don't contradict each other, right? right? But your understanding can definitely break it. Right, so and that's let what me, I, let me propose this. And that's what, and that's what you're doing with your under your understanding of Zechariah 12, right? No, I I, I want to sir, explain sir, you how sir, I can sir. harmonize this because you're misrepresenting my you position. Har Yo, you, your view does not harmonize anything because again, as we are demonstrating right here in in Torah, right, right, which comes before the prophets, right, we see what God has laid out through His chief prophet Moses, right. right. How things are going to happen, right? So you reject Zechariah? I'm not rejecting Zechariah. I reject your understanding of Zechariah. And you're well, how? How do you get Zechariah 12? Sir, 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 sir. I reject your understanding of Zechariah 12. I reject. What is your understanding? I, you I reject. Your mine's understanding. wrong. What's you know, yours, wait, wait, wait. Uh, sir? I reject your understanding of scripture in totality, and I'm showing how your understanding of scripture breaks the rest of scripture. Then that's tell me your interpretation of Zechariah 12. That's what's being done right now. Well, so you're again, not you're going to other yeah. scriptures. You're avoiding it like the plague, man. Do, do the scriptures, must the scriptures be harmonized? Yes or no? Yes. Okay, so let's harmonize it. Your understanding is that Zechariah 12 means that Jew, Judah, Judah, Benjamin, Levi will be in the land. Yes? At the, I, it appears yes. from Zechariah 12, it appears that way, yes. It appears that way. It appears at least Judah, at the very least Judah. A very, at the, what do you mean the very least Judah? You mean because it says, Judah? it says, and if you look at Zechariah 12, it says that the house of Judah will be saved and that the 
ultimately when all the nations are attacking it, that the house, so depending on whether that, because sometimes the house of Judah can refer to Levi and Benjamin, like how it usually is, but, but it specifically mentions David in one of the verses. So that's even more specific than just Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. So I want to, I, I just want to, you know, account for that because it right. describes specifically David in those verses. So, and, 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 and that's talking about a Messiah, right? That's talking about the Messiah, right? Well, yes, partly, oh, but it says, okay. it says and, and the, the least of them. Hold on, and the script and the scriptures say that the Messiah must come to his temple, right? Right. But I thought the, I thought the I thought the I thought the temple, all right, is being built after the Messiah comes. Right. How can, so he, how can, how can, how can he hold on, how can he come to his temple, right? If there's no temple there. Right. So he, like I said. He is going sure, to when sure. he comes to the demarcation. Your, what we your agreed upon, understanding breaks, breaks scripture. What we agreed upon was that the Messiah is intimately connected to the temple, correct? Yeah, of, of course. Whether or not, no, but, he, but again, he, again it's, I don't know that he must if he's going to put temple. his hands on it or what. He said that he must come to his temple, sir. So that is what is described, right? It says Christ. that Messiah bro, in Zechariah 6, that he bro. will be intimately connected with that. So how that comes about. I can't give you explicit, you know, I can't, I can't determine exactly because it hasn't sir, happened yet. Sir, sir, again, the reason why you can't explain it is because, again, your understanding breaks scripture. Well, let's, you let's, explain to me, Zechariah 12. Hold on, hold on. Oh, you let's, Zechariah 12. It talks at, about let's look at, bro, Yehuda. Let's look at the scripture, right? Yeah. Deuteronomy 30, uh, 30 and verse 2 says that the Lord, that we must return to the Lord and keep the commandments, right? Yeah, it's not happening right now in the land of Israel. They're not keeping the commandments. The vast majority of of of, of Jews are secular. All right, many of which are atheists, and they don't keep Torah. Those they will be punished for that, according to Zechariah fourteen, sir, when a bunch sir, of nations sir, attack sir, Israel. Sir, 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 right? Those the vast majority of those people do not keep Torah, right? But yet. Many, and, and many of them are in the land not keeping Torah, but God says that that would not happen, that the Israelites would be scattered for their breaking of Torah. And why does Zechariah... How can, your people, how can your people be the people if they're breaking Torah in the land of Israel? They cannot be. Let's keep why reading. Why does Zechariah... Says, no, 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 no. Explain, because again, you ran from 36, right? And now you're trying to run from this. I'm not right? running from 36. I went, I went through that verse by verse with you, man. Sir, sir, sir. It... I asked you a question and you didn't answer the question, right? Now I'm giving you another opportunity to answer the question here in Deuteronomy 30. It says, and shall return unto the Lord thy God. Have 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 your people returned unto the Lord their God? Not all of us, no. And have, and, and shall obey his voice. Are y'all obeying the of voice? Us, of no. Not okay. all of us, no. So obey his voice according to all that I command thee this day, that thou and thy children and all that with all thy heart and with all thy soul, right? So that, that, that has not happened. No, that we that has, not, that has not happened. Okay, cool. Some of us have, some of us have not. We're in the okay, process. Cool. Of doing that it. then, that then, after that happens, you said it hasn't happened yet, right? We haven't complete. The entire nation has it, not completely. It hasn't happened yet, yet right? Right. The entire okay, cool. nation has not completely repented yet. Gotcha. Please. Gotcha. Gotcha. You, not not even a, the, the the minority of your nation has has done so, right? So it says that then once. That happens, that then, once they come back and keep the commandments, that then the Lord thy God will turn thy captivity. You must be in captivity. Are your people in captivity, sir? Yes. How are your people in captivity? We're in exile, like I said. Let me, let's go to Hosea 1, or sorry, 11. Sir, sir, how, sir, sir, uh, sir, sir, Hosea, do you know the word captivity sir, means? That's the biblical definition sir, of what I Sir, 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 sir. How are you in captivity? How Explain. Show me Ashkenazim being in captivity. I'll wait. Ashkenazim being in captivity? Show me, Show me Daniel being sold on ships. Show me Daniel forgetting his identity. Sir, 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 you're, sir, you're really, sir What you're sir, doing sir, is you're going outside sir, of the sir, Bible sir, because sir. you have no answer for Zachary. You're going to answer my question. Show me your people being on, on, on our ships. Show me them being in captivity. Show me Daniel being on ships. According to your definition, Daniel, Daniel has not a deal. To be in, you want to throw out the book of Daniel too? Let's well, see. Sir, I'm not, I'm not, Zachariah. Well, I'm not Daniel. How can you call yourself a Jew when you don't Sir, I'm going to bring you back on, right? Sir, right? I'm trying to be very respectful because I, I, I don't see you as a sir, to be quite honest with you, right? 
I, there's, there's other things that I would like to call you, but I'm not going to, right? Your people do not fit Deuteronomy 30. They do not fit Deuteronomy uh, uh, Ezekiel 36, well, 37, right? They don't fit Ezekiel 38, right? They don't fit that. They don't fit the, the, the plethora of scriptures that says that the Israelites would be scattered for breaking the commandments and they would and in and, and, and that scattering they will discontinue from their heritage right that they will be going through curses and there will be an astonishment amongst all the nations in which they have been driven your people are not an astonishment right your people are are revered your people are protected right very much so your people have all types of leagues all right and all types of of of, of nonprofit organizations that aid them that, that, that go to bat for them, right? That's That exists for your people, right? Your people, by and large, do not keep Torah, right? And many of your people are in the land not keeping Torah. Prophecy says that the Israelites, if they're not keeping Torah, will be scattered from the land, not be in the land, right? And profaning the land, right? That's what your people are currently doing, right? And it says that once they return, right, they have that repentant spirit. They're teaching their children to keep the commandments that then the Lord will return their captivity. Their captivity looks like them being exiled to other nations and serving other nations according to the curses. That's not happening with your people. So stop trying to play a game and stop trying to spend Zechariah 12 to prove how your people can be in the land, breaking God's commandments, all right, and, and, and still be in the land. You can't do it, sir. You cannot. So again, I'm going to bring it back on. Let's go to Deuteronomy 30. I need you to answer my question. How is it that your people have not returned to the Lord, their God, right? And, it, and be in the land. How can that happen? I already how, told how, you, how, how do you, people I already told you man. I, I showed you the scripture. It doesn't say that Judah is going to return to the land in Zechariah 14 and that this means that they're completely cleansed. It says that they will be they're going to be ra the women will be ravished. The town will go into exile. It says that we read those verses. So don't tell me that we're going to be living the high life. And by the way, Daniel, the by, the way by the way, you by the way, by the way, land, sir, you should not be in the land. By the way, by the way, you cannot the way. be in the land. I want to miss something you sir, said. The Jews cannot be in the land if they're breaking the commandments. Your then why, the why does it say that the Jews land. are going to be killed in their own land oh my during God. the sir, time that the nations sir, attacked them in Zechariah 12? Have your people been cleansed? Have your people been cleansed yet? No, we're not at the okay, point. Okay, so how are you in the land? Because it says we will be in the land and we will be attacked by the nations sir, before sir. the Messianic era. I showed you in Zechariah 14. Sir, you have no explanation sir, for that. Sir, sir, sir. sir. You have to throw it out. No, I don't have to throw anything but out. Explain right? it. Explain oh it. God. Stop running. Okay. So first and foremost, I don't know who you need to take the bass out of your voice when you talk to me, boy. First and foremost, who explain it. Who are you talking? Running, to? You've been running who, from who are you? 12 and no, 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 who, 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 time. Who are you talking to right now? You're not talking to me. Explain it. Stop running. You're, no, 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 no. Put, take put some respect in your voice right now. Please explain. Who are it, you sir? talking to? Please explain right? it, sir. Let again, I'm explaining the totality of scripture, right? No, the you're not, you're ignoring it. <laughs> oh my god. By the way, Daniel was second in command to King Darius during the oh, curses. Oh, 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 Does that yeah, make him that, not that, a that, Jew? Because he was he was rich, he was rich, he was rich, asking as a Jew, so he was now you're playing now he's playing games, right? Playing games. Stop talking about Daniel, right? Clearly, the Israelites knew who they were at that point in time. Clearly, right? They didn't. They they weren't. They weren't scattered so much so that they lost their identity at this point in time. Of course not. But the scripture says that that would happen, and we're, we're and we're at a verse that 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 explains that, right? Deuteronomy thirty and one, and it shall come to pass when all these things come upon thee. What are these things that are coming upon the Israelites? The blessings and the curse. Part of the curses is, is what? Let's go to Deuteronomy 28. Let's, let's scroll down to verse. Where do I want to start? 
outside verse 58. Is it 58 I want? Um... Thirty six, right? And the Lord shall bring thee and thy king, which thou shalt set over thee unto a nation, whither neither thou nor thy father have known. And there shalt thou serve other gods, wood and stone. So part of them being scattered, they're going to start worshiping the other gods of the other nations, right? Not keeping their customs, right? But yet these people claim continuity, right? Verse sixty four. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people. From one end of the earth, even unto the other, and there thou shalt serve other gods. You're not serving the Lord, you're serving other gods, neither of which neither thou nor thy father hath known, even wood and stone. And among these nations thou shalt not find, thou shalt find no ease, meaning you're going to be in captivity. Neither shall the sole of thy feet have rest, but the Lord shall give thee there a trembling heart and a failing of eyes and sorrow of mind, and thy life shall hang in doubt before thee, and thou shalt fear day and night, and shalt not have no shall have none assurance of thy life. Right? So while in captivity, right, while you're in other lands, you're serving other gods, you're not keeping the commandments, right? That's the curses. So when we go to Deuteronomy 30, it says that it shall come to pass when all these things come upon thee. The blessing and the curse, the curse of you being scattered in other lands, not keeping your customs, worshiping the gods of the other nations, not keeping Halakha, not keeping Torah. You're not going to be doing these things. That's what the scripture says. It says, and, and while you're in, amongst these nations, you're going to remember yourselves or call them to mind. These things will return to your mind among these nations, right? Verse 2. And shalt return unto the Lord thy God. While you're in the lands, you must return to the Lord by doing what? By obeying his voice according to all that I command thee this day. Right? And thou, thou and thy children. So now your children got to start doing it too. Right? With all thy heart and with all thy soul, that's then. Until you do that, that this is not going to happen. That then the Lord thy God will turn thy captivity meaning gather you from out of captivity and have compassion on thee and will turn and gather thee from all nations whither the lord thy god has scattered thee right if any of thine be driven out from the uttermost parts of the heaven and from thence will the lord thy god gather thee and from thence will he fetch thee and the lord thy god will bring thee into the land which thy fathers possessed and thou shalt possess it and he will do thee good and multiply thee above thy father. So in order for this to happen, you must return. Your people have not returned. Your people have not returned. You don't fit this, sir. So you twisting Zechariah 12 to say, oh, yeah, we're going to be in the land, right? We're, Judah, Judah's going to be in the land. But that breaks Jeremiah 3 and 18. That breaks Isaiah 42, Jeremiah 50 and 33. That breaks a plethora of scriptures. That breaks Ezekiel 37. That breaks, breaks Ezekiel 38. Right, that breaks all of that. Breaks it all. You're not the people, sir. You're not. How how can your people? I brought you back. How can your people be in the land and breaking God's commandments with that just read? With that in mind, what we just read in Deuteronomy thirty. How? Explain. Zechariah fourteen. It says that we're going to be attacked by the nations while we're already in the land before the Messianic era. I'm How, sorry, that's can God's you, Can word. you be in a land? Can you be in a land and not be in a land at the same time? Yes. Here's why. Because the nation of Israel is not completely in the, like the Jews even, right? I don't care who you think the Jews are. Not all the Jews are in the land now. Some are, some aren't. So at a certain yeah. point, according to my understanding of Jeremiah, and you are sorry, Zechariah, and you can disagree. You can give me your interpretation. There are some Jews who are in Jerusalem now, who at some point, the nations of the world are going to attack to fulfill Zechariah 12, okay? At that point, Zechariah, the Jews will ward off their enemies, like it says, and then the other nations after that point will, the, the, the lost tribes of Israel, the other Jews scattered across the world, we, that's when Deuteronomy 
uh, 30 will be fulfilled and Zachariah, no, no, or sorry, no, uh, no, 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 then how do you reconcile sir, Zachariah sir, 12, sir, my sir, friend? Sir, 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 nice try, right? Let's give me, you, you, you are, you have not given sir. me your understanding of Zachariah 12 this entire time, sir. You're avoiding it like the plague. Let's go to Zechariah 12, right? Let's do it. Jerusalem, Tell me your understanding. right? The burden of the word of the Lord for Israel, saith the Lord, which uh, stretched forth the heavens and laid up the foundation of the earth and formed the spirit of man. Behold, I will make Jerusalem a cup of trembling unto all people round about, and they shall be in the siege both against Judah and against Jerusalem. And in that day will I make Jerusalem a burdensome stone for all people. All that burden themselves with it shall be cut in pieces. Though all the people of the earth shall be gathered together against this. This is uh, this is the battle of, of Armageddon, correct? And Judah's already in the land. Okay, let's keep reading. In that day, the uh, saith the Lord, I will smite every horse with astonishment and his rider with madness and will open my eyes upon the house of Judah uh, and will smite every horse of the people with blindness. And the governors of Judah shall uh, say in their heart, the inhabitants of Jerusalem shall be my strength in the Lord, uh, their uh, their uh, host of their God, right? In that day will I make the governors of Judah like an hearth of fire, mm -hmm. fire among the wood. The governors, so the government has to be on the, or has to be on the shoulders of the Messiah. The Messiah is bringing back the government, right? He's yeah. coming back, he's going to come back, right? And again, he, the gathering of the people shall come to him pursuant to Gen Genesis 49 in verse 10, right? The people will be gathered to him, right? So again, the Messiah has to has to come right, and must raise up the governors of Judah, right? It says, in that day will I make the governors of Judah like in heart of fire among the wood and uh, like a torch of fire in the sheath and they shall devour all the people round about on the right hand and on the left and Jerusalem shall be inhabited again in her own place, even in Jerusalem, right? So again, let's, let, let, let's explain this, right? Let's go to the book of Ezekiel. Right, chapter thirty-eight. Right, so in the end, talking about this 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 final war, right? Who's bringing this final war, right? God of Magog, right? So it says, and the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face against against God, the land of Magog, the chief prince of Meshech and Tubal, and prophesy against him, and say, uh, and say, thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am am uh, I'm against thee, O God, the chief prince of the Meshech and Tubal. And I will turn thee back and put hooks in thy jaws and it will bring forth all thine army, right? All these ar this army, right? Horses and horsemen, uh, all of them clothed with all sorts of armor, even a great company with bucklers and shields and all of them handling swords. Persia, Ethiopia, Libya with them, all of them with shield, Gomer and all his bands. So you got all this whole gang of different peoples, right? Clicked up with this individual, God of Magog, correct? Yeah. Okay, cool. Right, it says, "Be thou prepared, uh, and prepare thy for thyself, thou and all thy army that are assembled unto thee, and be thou guardian to them." Right, let's jump down. What's the verse? All right, boom, verse ten. Right, it says, um, "Actually, no, let's go to uh, verse eight. This is important, right? Verse seven: Be that, uh, be thou prepared, and prepare for thyself, thou and all thy company that are assembled unto thee, and um, be a guardian to them." After many days, thou shalt be visited. In the latter years, thou shalt come into the land that is brought back from the sword, right? The land that is come, brought back. So the Israelites are going to be brought back to the land, right? Oh, yeah. Right? It says, and is gathered out of many people, right? Where? From amongst all nations against the, against the mountains of Israel, right? right? Which have been always waste. But... It is brought forth out of the nations. Israel is brought forth from out of the nations, not from Jerusalem. They're being brought out from there, being brought to there, right? It says, and they shall dwell safely, all of them. Thou shalt ascend and come like a storm, right? Again, these people that are in the land, they have to be brought to the land, right? It doesn't say that, oh, they've, oh, they've just been there, you know what I mean? And they're breaking the commandments because that breaks Deuteronomy 30, right? That breaks... Uh, Ezekiel 36. All Not right, if you get attacked in Zechariah 14, which it says that the city goes in exile and is attacked. So that would fit with the curses. No, 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 no sir. Let's keep reading, right? It says, Thou shalt ascend and come like a storm, and thou shalt be like a cloud and cover the land, and thou shalt, thou and all thy bands and many people with thee. So all these people are coming against Jerusalem, right? But it says that 
Israel's gathered to Israel, right, from the other places, right? It says, thus saith the Lord God, it shall also come to pass that at the same time shall things come into thy mind, and thou shalt think an evil thought. And thou shalt say, I will go to the land of unwalled villages. Why? Because the, the villages are not, it's still desolate places. They're just being brought back, right? And I will go um, to them that are at rest, that dwell safely, all of them dwelling without walls and having neither uh, bars nor gates, to take a spoil and to take a prey and to turn uh, thine hand upon the desolate places that are now inhabited. They're now inhabited. They weren't inhabited before, but they're now inhabited, right? Because they just came back. They have just been gathered, as Deuteronomy 30 says, right? But again, your your people claim to have been in the land, all right, uh, and got hold of that land due to the Balfour Declaration of 1948, not the Lord gathering you there, right? It You're there, see right? The and, and great, there hold on, there there, hold the on, sir, it says we're going to be attacked. Sir, 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 they're there breaking the commandments. That's why we're attacked. No, sir. It says we go into exile. You want me to read Zechariah 14 for you sir, again? Sir, 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 sir. Let's slow down, right? You're missing a key point, right? It says, verse, 30, verse 8, and many days thou shalt be visited in the latter days, thou shalt come into the land that is brought back, brought back. They must be brought back to the land. Yes, from I the agree. Sword, from That's the simple. sword, right? And gather and it gather out of many people. Yes. Against the mountains of Israel, which have been always waste, but it shall uh, be brought, uh, shall you, um, but it is brought forth out of the nations, and they shall dwell all of them safely, all of them, right? So they have to be dwell, they're dwelling in safely, they're dwelling safely, right? But now you got people coming to attack them. That's Gog and all his bands coming against, all right, Jerusalem, who have been brought back to the land. They were brought from the land, and in order for them to be brought from the land, they have to be keeping the commandments, but yet your people are not ke uh, keeping the commandments. There are some have... – look, look. There's some of us that do keep the commandments and some of sir, them that don't. It's sir, not sir, that sir, all sir. of us don't keep the sir, commandments. Sir, you cannot be – in the. we just read several scriptures, Ezekiel 36, Ezekiel uh, 37, where they're going to be cleansed and gathered. Cleansed and gathered. Ultimately, I mean, they're going to be when the final geula, the final redemption oh, happens, God. yes. That then is you, what then, if that's the case. Then that you happens, shouldn't be there. Then y'all shouldn't be there right now. Y'all should not be there right now. What? what? So according to Zechariah, oh, uh, say that the Judah in the, the, in the land is already cleansed. Show that's, me where it says that the Judah that is in the land in Zechariah 12 that's attacked by all the nations. Show me where it says that they are already cleansed. Show me that. Let, let's let's go back to Ezekiel 36, sir. Let's right. go to Zechariah 12 because you made a claim sir, that they sir. have to be cleansed before they come to the land. Show me evidence. Sir, sir, they, sir you're, ta you're talking Yehuda about was already in cleansed when Yehuda, they Yehuda. Were in the land in Zechariah 12. Yehuda, 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 Yehuda. That's that's your position. sir, sir. You cannot be in the land doing abominations in the land because God says if you're doing these things, you're going to be scattered. Elsewhere, right? We already read that in Ezekiel 36, right? Let's find oh, show me where it says that Judah is cleansed in Zechariah 12 before the nations attack them in Jerusalem. Show me that. Sir. That's your claim. Sir, 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 sir. Your claim is yes. that Judah can't be in the land unless it's cleansed. So show me in Zechariah 12 where it says Judah is already cleansed before the nations attack. Sir, I, I went to Ezekiel 38 to explain. Zechariah 12, right? In, in Ezekiel 38, it says... You're, to, 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 you're trying to distract people from Zechariah 12 because it doesn't fit with your... I just, I just went to Zechariah 12 and I'm giving... And I give it, gave no, it. but you made a claim that Judah has to be cleansed before it goes into the land. And I showed you in Zechariah 12 sir, that they will be attacked before they are cleansed. Sir, sir, can Zechariah go against what Ezekiel says? Yes or no? No. Okay. So what Ezekiel says is true. Yes? Yes. Okay. Did Ezekiel say that the children of Israel will be cleansed and then brought into the land? Yes or no? Yes. Okay. So then Zechariah cannot break that. So Zachariah show me where. So, 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 okay. So, so let's. It's going over his head, right? And the reason why it's going over your head, sir, is because you are not an Israelite and God has not shown his word unto you. This is why it's going over your head right now, right? You just said. That Zechariah has to agree with Ezekiel. That's what you just said. 
I asked you, did Ezekiel say that the children of Israel must be cleansed and then brought to the land? You said yes. But but somehow Zechariah said, oh, no, they're, they're already here. Your understanding of Zechariah 12 is false. It's debunked. Zechariah 12 coincides perfectly with Ezekiel 38, where God and Magog and all of his bands are coming against Jerusalem, who has been brought back to the land after being cleansed. This is why we have to look at scripture, look at prophecy, and put them in their proper context. The visions are for appointed times. Zechariah cannot happen if the Israelites are not cleansed, sir. Zechariah 12 cannot happen unless the Israelites are brought back to their land and cleansed, sir. And we can see this all throughout Ezekiel. Ezekiel and Zechariah agree. You don't agree with Ezekiel, all right? And you make Zechariah and Ezekiel clash. You, you make them clash. You break the scripture. Why? Because God has not shown his word unto you. He has not shown his statutes and his judgments unto you, sir. You cannot explain how your people are in the land defiling it, right? How your people are in the land profaning, right? Doing all types of things that are against Torah, all right? And, 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 and reconcile that with Deuteronomy 30, which says that they must return. You can't do that. Why? Because the Lord has not shown his word unto you, all right? So again, I need, I need you to reconcile that. Zechariah 12, my friend. Sir, yeah. sir your, your, your answer every time is just Zechariah 12. And because, I, I just, well, I, 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 I just, I just bust you on Zechariah. No, 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 no. Yeah, let's read it. You made a claim. You claim that, let's see if it mentions them being cleansed. It sir, says. I'm going to ask you, I'm going to ask you one more time. Ezekiel and Zechariah agree, correct? Yes. Ezekiel says that the Israelites will be cleansed and then brought to the, the land. entirety of the nation, my friend, the entirety of the nation. Have Please nice make. Have a, ha have a nice day. You see, again, and again, I, I don't care. This guy can, can believe that his people are the descendants of Israel, all they want, right? They can He can believe that all he wants, right? I do this for my people, for my people to understand the truth. These people are not the children of God. You so-called Blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, you are the children of God. You are the ones who fit this prophecy. You are the ones who are in places where you, you are the product of captivity, right? You, you are the product, all right, of, of other nations coming against your nation of people, rounding them up, all right, and selling them all over the world. You're the product of that. Scriptures say that. That's, that's one of the signs or curses that God said would befall his people, right? As a curse, as a punishment, right? Why is that? Why is it that the Israelites gone through these things due to disobedience or inadherence to Torah? The Israelites, the real Israelites, by and large, are not keeping Torah. They're not, right? And they're in the lands of their captivities and they're remembering themselves as the scripture said, right? And they will be gathered, those that, that remember and do, right? And, and continue and, to, and, and return unto the Lord who will stop, they stop being backsliding children. They're going to return to the Lord, their God. And then he's going to return their captivity. You cannot be sinning, all right? And then be in the land. Returning that captivity means bringing you back to the land, right? Now, now you're now you're not under, all right, the curses, or you're not under the bondage of these other people, which is the curse or the punishment for sin. You cannot be sinning in, in the land. It's, it's not hard to see that, right? Let's go back to Ezekiel 36. Right? Ezekiel 36. Um, and what do I want to start? Right. It says, for I will take you from among the heathen. I'm taking you from among the heathen and gather you out of all the countries and I will bring you to your own place. Then I will sprinkle clean water upon you. So you have to have clean water sprinkled upon you to cleanse you of what? And you shall be clean from all your filthiness. And from all your idols will I cleanse you. Right. 
You a new heart will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you, and I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and ye shall keep my judgments and do them. If that's the case, if that's, if these people are the people, right? And if, why are they in the land and why are they not, why are they not cleansed? Why are they doing filthiness in the land according to Torah? Why? That's my question. How are these people in the land, right? Doing filthiness and them being the people. Oh, I got the answer. They're not the people, right? Let's 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 go up to Ezekiel 36 in, in the top, right? It says, also thou son of man, prophesy unto the mountains of Israel, the, which mountains are in the land of Israel, right? And say, ye mountains of Israel, hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God, behold, the enemies have said against you, aha, even the ancient high places are ours in possession. The high places are are in possession of the enemy. Therefore prophesy and say, thus saith the Lord God, because they have made you desolate. Israel's desolate right now. It's a, it's a barren wasteland, right? When the Israel, when the real Israelites are brought back into the land, right? The, the Lord's going to reverse the curse that's been put on the land due to our disobedience. These people are being disobedient in the land. And they shouldn't be there in the first place if they're the people, but they're not. They fit this prophecy, right? Therefore, prophesy and say, thus saith the Lord God, because they have uh, made you desolate and swallowed you up on every side, that ye may be a possession unto the residue of the heathen, meaning the worst of the heathen. And ye are taken up in the lips of talkers and are an infamy of the people. This, this guy's just a talker. He's a talker. It's been abundantly clear throughout the dialogue. Therefore, ye mountains of Israel, hear the word of the Lord God. Thus saith the Lord God to the mountains and to the hills, to the rivers and to the valleys, and to the desolate wastes and to the cities that are forsaken, which become a prey and a derision to the residue of the heathen that are round about. So the, the heathen are living in this place in, in a destitute state, in a destitute, uh, uh, in a destitute state, right? The residue of the heathen, the worst of the heathen. Right, that's what the Torah says. The land of Israel will be inhabited, right? The mountains of Israel will be inhabited, right? There'll be desolate wastes, right? They're forsaken cities by and large, right? It's left as a prey and a derision to the worst of the heathen, the residue of the heathen that are round about. Verse five. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, surely in the fire of my jealousy have I spoken against the residue of the heathen, against all Idumia, Edomites. Edomites are the residue of the heathen, right? Which have appointed my land into their possession with the joy of all their heart, with the spiteful minds to cast it out for a prey, right? Prophesy therefore concerning the land of Israel and say unto the other mountains and to the hills, to the rivers and to the valleys. Thus saith the Lord God, behold, I have spoken in my jealousy and in my fury because ye have borne the shame of the heathen. The land is bearing the shame of the heathen, and that's why, right, there are pride parades in the land of Israel. That is against Torah. Breaking of Torah means you will be scattered from the land, but yet these people are in the land doing these things, right? That just so happens to coincide perfectly with Ezekiel, the 36th chapter, where it's been left as a derision and a, uh, and a prey in a desolate, wasteful state, right, for the residue of the heathen. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, I have lifted up my hand. Surely the heathen that are about you, they shall bear their shame. But ye, O mountain of Israel, ye shall shoot forth your branches and yield your fruit of my people Israel, for they, uh, for they are at hand to come. They are at hand to come. So when the Israelites are being brought back into the land of Israel, right, once they're cleansed, once they appoint themselves one head, right, once they're keeping the commandments, right, they're coming back to the land. The land is being inhabited by who? By the residue of the heathen. And this is why he couldn't answer my question, right? For behold, I am for you, and I will turn unto you, and ye shall be, uh, uh, be tilled and sown. And I will multiply men upon you, all the house of Israel, even all of it. The city shall be inhabited. 
and the uh, way shall be builded, right? So again, if we go to the totality of scripture, let's go to Jeremiah 3 and verse 18. It's abundantly clear. In those days, the house of Judah shall walk with the house of Israel, and they shall come together out of the land of the north. The house of Judah and the house of Israel together will come forth out of the land of the north, come out of captivity, and then uh, a land of the north to the land that I have given for inheritance unto your fathers. But I said, how shall I put thee among the children, all right, and give thee a pleasant land, a goodly heritage of the host of, the, of, of nations? And I said, thou shalt call me my father and shall uh, not turn away from me, right? Surely as a wife treacherously departed from her, Husband, so have ye dealt treacherously with me, O house of Israel, saith the Lord. Right? But it says right here, right? How, how, how shall I uh put thee among the children? Right? How 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 are you gonna be in a pleasant land? Right? We're gonna call him our father at that time, meaning we're turning back, we're coming out of captivity, being cleansed, right? We were treacherous, treacherous, we did depart, but now we're being told to turn back. Right, verse uh, uh, verse uh, twenty-two. Turn, return ye backsliding children, and I will heal your backslidings. Behold, we come unto thee. Thou art the Lord our God. So now we're turning back to the Lord our God, coinciding perfectly with what Deuteronomy thirty, which says that that then the Lord will turn thy captivity after what the returning, the returning from backsliding. But yet these people are in the land, they haven't returned from so-called backsliding, right? You don't see a, an influx of, of Ashkenazim, all right, starting to keep Torah. No, you don't see that. They're not doing that. So how can they fit it? How can they fit these prophecies of the Israelites? Why? How, how can they do that? They cannot because they fit the prophecies of the Edomites, right? They, 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 they fit the prophecy of the Edomites very much so, right? And again, they fit Ezekiel 36 to be exact, right? They have taken the land of Israel, right? They possess the land of uh, Israel. They are the house of Edom, right? The scriptures calling them the residue of the heathen, right? They have appointed the land into their possession, right? Let's keep reading, right? This, this right here is super key, right? This is all key right here. Prophesy, therefore, concerning the land of Israel, and say unto the mountains, and to the hills, and to the rivers, and to the valleys, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I have spoken in my jealousy and fury, because ye have borne the shame of the heathen. The heathen have taken you to their possession, and now you're bearing the shame of the heathen. Right? Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, I have lifted up my hand. Surely the heathen that are around about you, they shall bear their shame, right? But ye, O mountains of Israel, ye shall shoot forth your branches and yield the fruit of my people, for they are at hand to come. They are at hand to come. For behold, I am for you, and I will, I will turn unto you, and ye shall be tilled and sown, right? I will multiply Men upon you, all the house of Israel, even all out, all of it, the cities shall be inhabited, and the waste shall be builded. Tel Arad, which is the actual city of the Lord, the actual Zion, the actual Jerusalem, right, lays desolate and waste right now. During a state of destitute waste in the wasted city, right, in wasted lands, right, the residue of the heathen will be inhabiting it. These people are the Edomites, point blank period. That's who they are. They are they are Edom. They have despitefully taken the land of Israel into their possession, pursuant to biblical prophecy. It's just so it, it just it's 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 clear as day, right? We must, we, the actual Israelites, must be cleansed. We must start to turn back. We must not be backsliding daughters. We must return to the Lord our God and keep his commandments, and then he will gather us from out of the nations. Right now, we're still currently scattered amongst the nations. Right? I live in the worst nation on the planet Earth. All right? The, the most vile and disgusting things happen in the place in which I live. Okay? I don't want to be here. 
I would much rather be in the land of Israel, in the land flowing with milk and honey, but the land of Israel is not a land flowing with milk and honey right now. It's a desolate wilderness. It is a, 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 a desert, okay? That's what the land of Israel is right now, right? Why? Because the residue of the heathen are dwelling there. And the actual Israelites are not there. The actual Israelites are still in a sinful state and need to return. And that's what's important. So-called Blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, y'all need to return and keep these commandments, all right, so that you can get back to a goodly land, right? A land where the Lord will multiply us and our children, where we will not want for anything, right? It says, and the city shall be inhabited and uh, the way shall be built. That's what's going to happen, right? Again, Ezekiel says that they will be cleansed, okay? We'll be cleansed before we're brought back into the land. Deuteronomy 30 proves that, all right? Ezekiel 38 is the answer to his question of Zechariah 12. Oh, well, Zechariah 12 says that, that the Jews are going to be in the land. The governors of Judah. There's no governors of Judah right now, right? There's no, there's no Ju actual descendants of Judah in the land of, of, of Judah right now that are governors currently, right? And he agreed that Zechariah 12 is messianic, right? Well, according to Isaiah 9, right, the government shall be upon his shoulders, this Messiah, who is who, who is Yahweh Shai Hamashiach, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus the Christ, okay? He's the Messiah, all right? He's Shiloh. He's he's who the, 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 the nation, the people will be gathered unto, right? Gathered unto them where, right? Let's go to Ezekiel at the 20th. All right, Ezekiel chapter 20, and I'll start at verse 33. It says, as I live, saith the Lord God, surely with a mighty hand, with a stretched out arm, and with fury poured out, will I rule over you. And I will bring you out from the people and will gather you out of the countries wherein ye are scattered. All right, Israelites, scattered, four corners of the earth, right? Scattered from where? From Israel, from Jerusalem, right? With a mighty hand, with a stretched out arm, and with fury poured out, and I will bring you into the wilderness of the people, and there will I plead with you face to face, like as I pleaded with your fathers in the wilderness uh, of the land of Egypt. So will I plead with you, saith the Lord God. When did that happen for them? This has not happened yet. When did this happen, right? It did not happen, right? It says, I will cause you to pass under the rod, and I will bring you into the bond of the covenant. That covenant of peace that Ezekiel, the 36th chapter, talks about, right? Let's go back there. Actually, Ezekiel 37, right? Ezekiel 37. That covenant of peace, right? It says, more, oh, I will make a covenant of peace with them and, I, and shall be an everlasting covenant with them. This is the new covenant. And I will, uh, I will place them and multiply them and set my sanctuary in the midst of them forevermore, right? It's it, this this covenant of peace, this new covenant, right? The Israelites must go under that bond of that covenant in the wilderness of Egypt, just as they did, right? Go enter into the first covenant, right? It says, and I will cause you to pass under the rod and I will bring you to the bond of the covenant and I will purge out from among you the rebels and then that transgress against me. There will be no more transgressors, all right, when this happens. Anyone that wants to rebel and doesn't want to get down with it, get down, doesn't want to set that one king over them, Hamashiach, Yehoshai, guess what? They're going to be purged out, right? I will purge them out from among you, the rebels, and them that transgress against me. I will bring them forth out of the country where uh, where they sojourn, and they shall not enter the, into uh, the land of Israel. And ye shall know that I am the Lord. How can these people be of Israel, in the land of Israel, breaking the commandments of God, when God says that, guess what, there'll be no more rebels, there'll be no more transgressors, right, in the land of Israel. Gotcha, you're finished, right? Let's keep going, verse 39. As for you, O house of Israel, thus saith the Lord God, go, uh, go ye, serve ye every uh, one of his idols, and hereafter also, if uh, ye will not hearken unto me, but pollute ye my holy name, 
uh, no more with your gifts and your with your idols. For in mine holy mountain and in the mountain of the height of Israel, said the Lord God, there shall be the house of Israel and all of them in the land uh, serve me. There will I accept them and there will I require your offerings and the first fruits of your oblations and with all your holy things. So again, in order for us to be the house of Israel in the land of Israel, we cannot be, all right, in idolatry. We cannot be sinning. We cannot be polluting the land, right, with abominable things. But yet these people are doing abominable things in the land of Israel. Why? Because they're the Edomites. They're the border of wickedness, as the scriptures say, right? Malachi 1 and verse 3 through 4. Edom has possession of the land of Israel right now. Israel does not. The actual descendants of Israel, right, Yasha Allah, does not have dominion over the land of Yasha Allah, over the promised land. Edom does. And Ezekiel 36 perfectly explains that. Perfectly explains that. Right? Man, it's just abundantly clear, man, that these people are not it. Right? His understanding of scripture, right, is horrendous. His understanding of scripture breaks the rest of scripture, just how Christians do. Right? Why? Because the Lord has not shown his word unto them. Actually, let's get that real quick. Right? This is Psalm 147. Verse 19, it says, he showed his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. He has not dealt so with any nation and asked for his judgments. They have not known them. Praise you, the Lord. They don't know the judgments of the Lord, right? Whatever angle they come from, they come from the angle of, oh, we've been keeping Torah for uh, for 2,000 years, for continually, blah, 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 right? Well, if that's the case right, that you're not the people because the scriptures say that the Israelites would have to remember themselves in the land of their captivity and return and start keeping the commandments and then the Lord's going to bring them back. Y'all are in the land, right, and, and apparently have been keeping the, the Torah for, for forever. It doesn't fit with what the scriptures say. It's abundantly clear. Why? Because these people are converts. They have converted to our ways. While we were not keeping our ways, they converted to our ways, okay? And they, and they took possession of, of the land of Israel, right? They took possession of our land, and us returning, not being backsliding daughters, us returning to the Lord in the keeping of his commandments is bringing their, their, their dominion over that land to an end. That's how they're going to get up out of that land, right? We are going to come back into that land, right? through the Messiah, bringing us back, right? Us going under the bond of the covenant, us being cleansed and us then going into the land and possessing the land, right? And then Gog and Magog, right? They're going to come against us, all right? Those who have been brought back, right? To the land. Let's go back to that, right? Ezekiel 38 uh, and verse uh, seven, uh, start at verse eight. After many days thou shalt be visited, in the latter years thou shalt come into the land that is brought back from the sword. We're being brought back from captivity, right? And is gathered out of many people against the mountains of Israel, right? The mountains of Israel are possessed by the Edomites, right? The Israelites are going to be brought back to the land, right? And possess the land, right? And then Gog and Magog is going to come against them, right? This explains this whole Zechariah 12 mishap, right? It says... Um, gather out of many people against the mountains of Israel, which have been always waste, but is brought back forth out of the nations, and they shall dwell all of them safe, uh, safely, all of them, right? We're going to be dwelling safely, right? When we come back into our land, when the Lord brings us back into our land, right? Well, guess what? These people are not dwelling safely. They have a whole iron dome, all right? Why? Because they're not dwelling safely. Ain't that something, Right? They're, he's claiming that his people are the people, right? And that they're in the land. He used Zechariah 12 as an explanation, right? Well, the scriptures say that they're going to be dwelling safely. The Israelites, the Israelites will be dwelling safely in the land, right, when they're brought back. But while when they're being brought back, there will be other people, Edomites, dwelling there. I, 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 guess, the, I guess the Palestinians that were there before them, right, that those people were Edomites, no, they're not. Those are Ishmaelites, okay? The so-called Palestinians. Those are Ishmaelites. 
These people are not the people, right? Let's keep going. Verse uh, 9, thou shalt ascend and come like a storm and shall be like a cloud over the land. Thou shalt, thou, shalt, thou and all thy, uh, their, thy bands and many people with thee. Thus saith the Lord God, it shall come to pass that at the same time shall things come into thy mind and thou shalt think an evil thought and thou shalt say, I will go to the land of unwalled villages. I will go to them that are at rest, that dwell safely, all of them dwelling without walls and having neither bars nor gates, to take a spoil and to take a prey and to turn thy hand upon the desolate places that are now inhabited, that are now inhabited. After what? The Israelites are brought back after the Israelites return to the Lord and keep the commandments, right? Then they're going to be brought back into the land, right? And when they're being brought back into the land, there will be another people already in the land. That's them. They're the other people that's already in the land. We're the people that need to get gathered and brought back to our land. In order for us to get back to our land, we must return and keep God's commandments. That's what has to happen according to prophecy, right? And again, this is why he was not able to explain this. Right? He was, oh, Zechariah 12, Zechariah 12, Zechariah 12. Zechariah 12 does not help you and does not suit you, sir. Right? It just does not. And it's been abundantly clear and demonstrated, all right, here through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. Right? It says, verse 12, um, that are now inhabited upon the people that are gathered out of the nations, which have gotten cattle and goods and dwell in the midst of the land. Right? So this is what's going to happen. Right? This is future prophecy. Right, the Edomites will be dwelling in the land at the time of the return of the actual Israelites. Right, the Israelites will be gathered unto Shiloh, right, which is Hamashiach Yahweh, the Messiah. Right, they will be gathered to him. Right, brought under the bond of the covenant. Right, any rebels, people that don't want to serve, right, they don't want to get down with the get down, will be, you know, what I mean, taken out of commission. Okay, and then the Israelites are going to go into the land and dwell there, right? They're going to take the land, right? And then, the, and here comes Gog and Magog, and all of his armies are going to come against us as we're in the land, right? Getting ready to rebuild our land. It's just that simple. It's it's a chronology to, uh, to prophecy, right? Israelites must return, keep the commandments, right? Brought into the uh to the wilderness outside of the land, brought under the bond of the covenant, which is the cleansing process, right? Given that heart of uh of flesh instead of that stony heart right they're not gonna be hard-headed right they're not gonna be hard-hearted anymore right they're not going to be breaking commandments they're not gonna be having pride parades they're not gonna be having coach report they're not gonna be having smoking cigarettes right that's not what's going to be happening right when the israelites are being brought back into the land because they'll be cleansed right they will be cleansed they will have a they will repent they will return to the lord there's a repentance that must be happening and then there's a perfection all right, a cleansing of the heart, give it a, a heart of flesh, right? The circumcision of the heart, that must happen, okay? And then they're going into the land. Not before. Not, they cannot be the Israelites and be in that land and this be true at the same time. It just cannot. It cannot. Ezekiel 37 cannot be true, right? If they, they cannot be the Israelites and Ezekiel 37 be true, right? At the same time, it just cannot. So what's the only logical deduction that we can make? That they are not the Israelites. And notice how I went from 36 to 37 to 38 of Ezekiel. All explaining all of this, right? Perfectly through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. Right? Ezekiel 30, 38 explaining what Zechariah 12 is going to. I was trying to get him to answer these questions. To prove how his people can be doing the things that they're doing in that land currently. And still be the people and not be in exile. Oh, Zechariah 12, Zechariah 12, Zechariah 12 does not help you. Did not help you. You going there did not help you whatsoever at all. But he was a slippery, slimy little bugger. All right. And he got destroyed through the spirit and power of your Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shah. All right. So with that, you know, I want to give all praise, glory, and honor to the Most High God, Yahweh. All right. Make sure you like the video, share the video. Uh, give uh, share as many people as you can, right? If it's on your heart, give a super chat, right? Or a super thanks if you're watching it after the premiere, right? And again, we just, again, we got to push this truth to the four corners of the earth so that our people can wake up to who they are, who they belong to, and what's required of them. And that's us keeping these commandments, right? Again, with that, I give all praise, glory, and honor to the Most High God, Yahweh. 
I do so in the name of his only begotten son, Yahweh Shai, who the world intimately called Jesus Christ. Right? Shalom.